holy crap. People persist in doubting the evidence. Don't run and hide. Don't be afraid. Don't turn away any longer. The truth will set you free. You're listening to Jimmy Church Fade to Black on the Dark Matter Radio Network. And now, your host, the captain of conspiracy, the prince of paranormal. This ain't your daddy's radio network show. This is Jimmy Church, Fade to Black. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. My fave, oh, right, night of the week. Welcome, everybody. It's Fader Night. Yay, yay. <laughs> All right. All right, I'm going to get serious. Put my serious hat on. Let's get this one cracking. Let's go. It's fade to black. Bespoke radio for the masses. Today is Thursday, September 18th, 260 days into the Gregorian New Year. As always, we are live from JP Motorsports Studios right here in sunny Burbank, Gates of Hell, downtown Burbank, California. For KJCR and the Dark Matter Radio Network, I am your humble host, Jimmy Church. How you doing? How you doing? Let me let me glance over. Stallone, release the Kraken. Sherilyn says Texas is here representing. George Ray Aruda. Steve <laughs> from Bluefield. So I'm talking about Michael K, Michael Anderson, Ken Lipson, Brian Anderson, Leslie Johnson the third, Betty Oliver's here. Wait, did I just see Donna Colvin? Donna, let's rock this baby. She says, and check this out, Donna. I did get your uh, contact request today. Jeremy Maddock is here. Fader Knight. We know who that is. That's we know who that is. That's we know who that is. Gene Vito's in. Man, of course, Rick is here. Man, oh man, oh man. I'm just scrolling through. Tw- Twitter's on fire. Wow. Allison just checked in. All right, the show can start. Well, no, we need Eugene. Ah, uh, somebody just said bacon. <laughs> I saw the other day. What, what, what was it? Puppies and kittens. <laughs> Method just arrived. All right. Cortana. Where's Cortana? I am so excited. Man, Thursday. Thursday is here. All right. <laughs> uh, Caitlin Bishop. That's... Is she new? I, I don't want to embarrass myself. I mean, there's so many, so many. The, the, this, uh, the sandbox is, is way off the hook. Way, way off the hook. I didn't say Space Boy because, you know, it's just, it's just a, a, a matter of fact. But uh, everybody's here. Ah, 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 ah. Cortana just arrived. Okay, we can officially start. Sort of. Missing, we're missing a few. We're missing Lou, missing Eugene. I think they're hiding. Big salute to the proud men and women in uniform. Without them, there is no me, there is no you, there is no us, there is no fate or night. You couldn't make those phone calls. Think about that for a second. Big press release today. Oh, you know, we'll get to that. Let's have fun. Let's do this. I tried to keep all the news tonight from being depressing. 
but uh, Renee assured us that it wouldn't. <laughs> today, today, one of my main men, today, Fred Willard is 81 years old. Fred friggin' Will- 81. Unbelievable. Starting for with me starting starting with but for me starting with things like think about this Fernwood tonight still one of the best television series ever ever in broadcast Fernwood tonight SCTV all of the Christopher Guest movies like Waiting for Guffman Best in Show A Mighty Win for your consideration you can't forget about Anchorman, Anchorman 2. Well, Anchorman 2 you can forget about. But Anchorman, Wall-E, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Did I just say White Castle? Not that, Fred Willard, Remo Williams, Donna. Yeah, no, that's Fred Williams. <laughs> I do that all the time. That's funny. That's funny. No, no, no. Um, uh, Fred Willard. Uh, White Castle. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. How many people right now in Twitter went to White Castle this week? Yeah, Donna Colvin said wrong. Fred, I do that all the time. Um, How many people went to White Castle this week? Now, I'll let you know. We don't have White Castle in California. Nope. We've already talked about Waffle House, but let me tell you, when I go to the Midwest, anywhere in the Midwest, that's the first thing I ask, man. That plane lands, wheels down. I'm off the plane. Somebody's meeting. I'm just like, dude, do you guys have White Castle? We got to go. Anyway, what was I talking about? Oh, Fred, Fred Willard. Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. He's got two. 162 other film credits on IMDb plus 131 credits where he plays himself. One of the funniest men ever. Happy birthday, Fred Willard, 81 years old. Our dead guy birthday today, James Gandolfini who will always will be remembered as Tony Soprano. And, uh, it, it just, you know, that's, that's a glorious thing. That's a glorious connection. He will always be remembered. We will never forget James Gandolfini. But I was thinking today, um, oh, by the way, born in 1961, died in 2013. We all know what happened. He was vacationing in Rome. Italy died suddenly of a heart attack. But I was thinking today, There's a place here, everybody that's listening right now from Southern California and that knows Burbank, but knows cinema, the movie True Romance and the Safari Inn. Gandolfini, you remember uh, where Clarence and Alabama were, were hiding out. They were hiding out at the Safari Inn when they finally made it to Los Angeles. The Safari Inn. That's a real place. It's right there. It's like on Olive. I think it's on Olive, Riverside, Olive, one of the two, Alameda. They all kind of merge right there and turn into different streets, different names. But anyway, I think it's on Olive um, next to uh, Johnny's Philly Cheesesteak Sandwiches right next door. Anyway, you can drive right now and drive by the Safari Inn. And every time that I do, because that sign is so iconic and they really showed it in true romance. And the Safari Inn is right there, man. It's right there. And you drive by and we do it all the time. And it's it's right down the street from us here. And I think of Gandolfini. I don't think of Clarence in Alabama. You kind of think of Alabama. But you drive by and there it is. The sign is right there. The Safari Inn. It's a real joint. James Gandolfini. Also, today, and we need to celebrate this a little bit. We do. It's got to be an uppity day. But today is a big day. September 18th, 1970, Jimi Hendrix pronounced dead on arrival at St. Mary Abbott's Hospital in London 
the age of 27. And uh, the last thing that he did, he left a message, I need help bad, man, was the message to his manager. And there you go, Jimmy Hendricks, 27 years old. The crazy part about Jimmy is he only had like three years, three and a half years, maybe four if you stretch it, four years of us enjoying his talent. That was it. 1970, 1966, he broke on the scene. 1967, 1968, started to change the world. 1970, gone. 27 years old. And it's happened so many times uh, in rock and roll. Actors, too, but in rock and roll. And certainly, Randy Rhodes comes to mind right right away. I mean, the most gifted, it just seems like we lose him. Dimebag Daryl, another, another example. Um, but... Uh, Anyway, anyway, um, there you go. 1970, September 18th, Jimi Hendrix. And, you know, and, and again, and I'm looking here, and it's great to see uh, everybody recognize. You know, I, uh, I watched uh, the Jimmy on Jimmy special on Axis the other day. And, wow, you know, you just, you just kind of forget. But that... That dude, <laughs> that dude was way, way ahead. I mean, he made a deal with the devil. Yeah, that's all right. He had his four years of, four years of fame. He gave us a gift. Follow us tonight on Twitter. Twitter's already completely out of control. And if you want to witness it, what you should do, you can do one of two things. One, you can download TweetDeck. Get on TweetDeck. Get your column going. Hashtag DM Radio Net. Get another column going, hashtag F2BQ, questions for me. And then another column that will be yours, notifications in, in that column. So get three columns going in TweetDeck. Watch what Dark Matter Radio does on Twitter during this show. It's so much fun. Some crazy people out there. And the fade to black family and the fader knots and, and what we do every single night, it's, it's, it's amazing. And Thursday night. It's fader night. It's your night, and we light it up. So if you want to see it and you don't want to download TweetDeck or you don't know how and you just want to keep it simple, go over to Dark Matter Radio. Go over to Dark Matter Radio Net. That's where you want to go, darkmatterradio.net. And right there, the player's on that page. It's already playing, and there's the tweet box, the sandbox right there. Go check it out. And if you want to jump in, do it with feet first and come play in the sandbox. At J Church Radio is what you want to do. If you got any questions for me during the show tonight, Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com is uh, the best way to do it. You can also go to the website. The website, we've uh, really, really got that cranking over the last couple of weeks. It really looks good. Method of signaling has helped us out. We have the new Fader Not page over there with all of the uh, artwork that you guys have done. Um, we have a bunch more that we're going to be uploading. I think some more stuff hit the page uh, yesterday and today. So go check that out, too, at jimmychurchradio.com. If you want to email me through the website, which a lot of people do, just go to the contact page, and there's an email um, that you can do and send it straight to us. That goes, well, all of the email goes to the producers here. And for some reason... My direct email, the Jimmy at JimmyChurchRadio.com, that used to be the main thing, you know, 100, 200 emails a day. I still get a fair amount, but it seems like you guys like to email through that page. Like you want to send something to the producers first before I see it. And I've been noticing this, and I feel a little cheated. I feel a little violated that there's this uh, this communication that goes on between the producers here that that I never get to see. And, I, and I'm just like, oh, well, did you see this email? No, I didn't see it. You know I didn't. You know you didn't send it to me. I have no idea. Now, it's completely out of control. I have no idea what goes on now. I'm just the dude doing this. Drinking Starbucks and speaking on the mic. Uh, let's take our first break. We're going to open up the phone lines here in just a minute. 
Open lines all night, 323-825-5045. You can Skype in. Skype is fade to black 14. Always email throughout the show. This is Fader Nights, my favorite night of the week. Let's light it up tonight. 11-11. One, 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 one. 333-222-420. I don't know. I want to know. Secret numbers. Numbers that you see all the time. Do you wake up in the middle of the night, look at the clock and see a number? How long has it been going on? What is your number? I'll tell you mine in a bit. This is Fade to Black, only on the Dark Matter Radio Network. Eugene just got here. We're all good. Klaatu just got here. It's all good. It is Fader Night. I'll be back right after this. Stay with us, everybody. You're listening to Jimmy Church Fade to Black on the Dark Matter Radio Network. Ladies and gentlemen, girls and boys, you have tuned into the latest phenomenon in late night talk radio, Fade to Black, starring the inimitable Jimmy Church, showcasing his continuing quest pursuit of knowledge of the strange paranormal. Sit back, open your mind, and let's get cracking. What's up, revolutionaries? It's me, Jimmy Church. Do you have an IRS or state tax issue? Well, I did, and I called national tax experts. My problems were fixed, done, fini, and man, I gotta tell you, it was a relief. National tax experts are a recognized tax office that services clients in all 50 states. doesn't matter where you live. Give them a call. I'm telling you, they take the time to understand each and every client's individual financial status as well as their financial goals. And that's exactly what you need, my brother, when you're taking on the evil three-letter. So, seriously, give them a call today at 1-877-909-5444. Again, 1-877-909-5444 one 909 5444 or go check out their website, www.nattaxexperts.com. That's N-A-T-T-A-X-E-X-P-E-R-T-S.com. Tell them Jimmy sent you. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com. On the Dark Matter Radio Network. <laughs> Yeah, Fade to Black, only on the Dark Matter Radio Network. Tonight is Fader Night. Open lines all night. Calls have been coming in already. I'm not going to open up the lines till 730. Okay, there you go. One call each. Let everybody have some time. All right. I do have some uh, Space Boy CDs for first-time callers. Got a stack of those courtesy of Space Boy. Autographed, by the way. All right. Got a a lot of stuff to talk about. Let's set some subjects on the table. Uh, From Facebook, this is from Paul Nicolau. He says, I will reference the title of a Led Zeppelin song how many more times? In that, saying another great show with Bill Burns and the Marcells. Informal chat that surely pulled in a lot of listeners. I absolutely love the show. Now on to part two. Keep them shows coming. My world of accounting just wouldn't be the same without the JC Fade to Black shows in it anymore. Thank you, Paul. Very cool. little delayed, but there it is. Another email from Les. Should I call it an email? I mean, it's Les. <laughs> the guest had brought up an interesting question to my mind last night. When y'all brought up uh, this group together, I myself had started to notice that we in the sandbox and on Twitter, etc., have had more and more synchronistic moments as of late. I'd like to know, is it just me? 
or are a number of people listening to the show that have noticed this. It also seemed that a lot of fader knots seem to be seeing the 111333 numbers, myself included. If you would let me know your thoughts on these subjects, it would be greatly appreciated. That's from Les. I'm throwing it out there. 111111222, what is your number? I want to know. My number, I give it to you every night. Fade to black 14. My number is 14. My number is 14. Pops up all the time. Now, is it because it's, it's been a focus of mine since I was a little kid? The number 14 was A.J. Foyt's car number. That's it. So it's been my lucky number. Always 14. Go do the lottery, 14, 14, <laughs> whatever. Just 14, 14. That's my number. I see it all the time. Pops up all the time. It's always in my life, 14. It's bizarre to me. Is it my mental focus on it? I don't know. My number is 14, and I see it all the time. What I don't see is the 1111, the 420. I've never seen <laughs> Did I just say that? But 420, you know, 333. What is it? What? it it's fascinating to me. It got brought up this month over at the house, and I was totally shocked about the conversation that went on at the dinner table about this number. Had some company over. Brought it up this week on the show, and it turns out we're not the only ones. I want to know, what's your number? What does it mean to you? When do you see it? Do you wake up in the middle of the night, can't sleep, look over at the clock and go, no. I want to know. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. I've got some other stuff I'm going to throw on the table. This email came in from Renee. She says, I don't really understand all the fuss on speed talking by Grant Cameron and Solaris Blue Raven. I don't know what it's all about. For those of us who grew up in New York City, it's just no <laughs> it's just normal speech. As New Yorkers say, she says, listen faster. <laughs> oh man, Grant wore me out last night. And uh, again, on Twitter, puppies and kittens. <laughs> puppies and kittens, bacon. All right. Now, uh do keep the the guest request uh coming. Next week, um uh, I have a full week. All three guests are requests of yours. All three. And uh, uh, we have uh, Richard Allen Miller on Monday. Tuesday is going to be James Swagger, much requested. He is back from Bosnia. He went and visited the pyramids. And I've been talking to him uh, all week this week, actually, about what he has seen out there. Fascinating stuff. So that'll be Tuesday. Wednesday will be a surprise. I've always got to keep one on the back burner. And I'll say this. David Hatcher Children. Been reaching out, not returning my email, not doing it. Left a couple of messages. Interesting, isn't it? So if you got a way to get to, Method says his number is 922. Isn't that what time it is? <laughs> uh, Hutchison as a guest. Is he still around? That guy flipped me out for a couple of years. Um, but anyway, David Hatcher Childress. You guys want to bomb this guy with some email, stir the pot? Uh, I, I can't, I can't do any more than I've already done. But the uh, the amount of email and and requests and Facebook and text and tweets about Childress is is overwhelming. So yeah, well, let's get him on the show. Bomb that guy, bomb him. Let's get him on the show. What, what's his Twitter handle? Anybody know it? Anybody know Childress? Uh, uh, fly that into Twitter right now, and uh, let's uh, let's bomb him tonight on Twitter so he trips out a little bit. David Paulides and Brian Forrester. Yes, yes, those are two good guests. Brian is all over the world all the time. We were I was just talking to a James Swagger about him the other day. He's over in Europe right now. 
Uh, it's a little bit tough. And as a matter of fact, I think him and Baval are over in Egypt. And what Swagger was telling me, he says, dude, uh, there's no Internet in Egypt. To do anything, you have to have a laptop with a little uh, uh, dongle, you know, a little uh, antenna on it, and you're doing whatever, 1G, 2G, download, update. You can barely check email. Cell phone service is sporadic, and so that's where they're at right now. So as soon as they come back, Paulides is doing a thing over at uh, UPARS next month. And uh, so I'll see if uh, we can tie David into, into this show with that. Um, he's a tough guy to book, uh, Polites. And uh, so anyway, all right, so that's it. David Hatcher Childress. I just tweeted out pictures of the Lynn Lewis Elvis mug, and I hope that everybody saw that because I have a backup tonight. That's what I'm doing. I've got two mugs, two mugs, two of Starbucks sitting in front of me. I want to make sure I do not run out during the show. I'm not going to take any breaks. We're going to run this straight through. Tonight is Fader Night. Open lines. Next week, Richard Allen Miller. It's going to be awesome. Some of the things that uh, I'd like to talk about tonight. We've got uh, Rob Ford, mayor of Toronto. Check this out. Aggressive form of cancer in his buttocks. I'm not making fun of it. That's just what the press release is. Uh, he's going to undergo some. It's an aggressive form of cancer. He's undergoing chemotherapy starting now. Joan Rivers' throat doctor has been ID'd as Dr. Gwen Corovin. Um, will be the next person filing for bankruptcy in Manhattan. I am sure she is the first. Uh, doctor that will be filing for unemployment. Uh, did you uh, did you ever get spanked as a kid? All of this spanking talk this week. Anybody ever get spanked? <laughs> we all did, right? What's the big deal? I don't know. It's that's kind of flipping me out right now. Ah, you go and you spank your kid now, and they dial nine one one, and daddy goes to jail. <laughs> Uh, mommy goes to jail. That's, that's kind of flipping me out. I think we all grew up. Okay. What's the deal? What's the, I don't know. There's abuse. That's another thing, but getting a little whack, whack, uh, military said today that, uh, the U S is ready to strike at Syria at any moment. And I would assume that, uh, you could go, uh, right now, go to CNN and we're going to see that headline. Uh, that that's uh, when they say that. If I'm ISIS right now, I quit. I just quit. Quit. Stop. Save your lives. Just stop. Just stop. Go back home. Go back to wherever you came from, and quit. Because Great Britain and the United States are coming, and you're not going to see it, and it's going to be bad. It's going to be very bad. I'm not going to play around. Home Depot today announced that 56 million credit and debit cards have now been exposed. 56 million in a one month, one month, uh, uh, what, what do I want to say? A bad news month is <laughs> just a bad month. 56 million. 56 million. Now, I, I was just doing the math. There's 330, 340 million people in the United States. One out of six, one out of five people just got exposed through Home Depot. You better check your, you better check your, you better check your stash and your wallet. 56 million. And I stopped and I thought, well, I've been to Home Depot like, oh, I don't know, 20 times in the last two months. Peyton Manning. This is a headline right here. Check this out. Pate Manning said today, the pizza business is good in Colorado. Due to what? <laughs> Legalization. That's right. Manning purposefully purchased 
21 Papa John restaurants. That's right. In a hotbed of munchy food distribution. 21. How good is business? Peyton says business is really good. Uh, Of course, the other headline right now is Scotland. We're talking about that. Also, uh, Renee today sent me another article. It's pretty cool. And uh, I'll get to that in between phone calls. So let's bang our first. You are live right now on Fader Night with Jimmy Church. Who's calling? Where are you calling from? Hey, Jimmy Church. It's Bonnie McNabb calling from Moraga, California. How are you, bud? Oh, my, 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 my. How are you, Bonnie? I'm well, honey. How are you? Bonnie and I, uh, now this is the first time we've spoke, actually, I believe. Is it? Is it the first time we've spoke? No, we've been uh, live. We, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We've uh, emailed and uh, mostly Facebooked all the time. Yeah, for years. For years and years and years. Bonnie, when I started uh, the sports show years ago, what, uh, 2008, 2009, Bonnie was there from the very get go. And, uh, and here we are talking for the first time after uh, being friends for years and years and years. How, Bonnie, how are you? I am very well. How are you? I'm great. The show was well, great. Well, you and... seem great, and I mean, you <laughs> tantalized me with all those pictures of all that manly meat that you you and your family cook on the weekends. <laughs> it makes me really hungry. So, oh, uh, it's funny, and I and I can always uh, count on you commenting or or count countering the cook off. Okay, so there right. you go. There you go. You do your own thing, Bonnie. It's great to hear your voice after all these years. And you too. I, I will say this. I feel like, you know, uh, we, we've been such close friends and hanging out for so many years that uh, it's, it's strange. I, I, I almost knew your voice as soon as you said, uh, hi, it's Bonnie. I, I felt it. I felt it. Now, uh, really quick, um, and, and you're our first caller tonight, and I do want everybody here on Twitter to, uh, to welcome my uh, friend Bonnie to uh, the family. She's uh, been a member of the family forever. But today, when I posted uh, the one 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 three 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 comment, you came straight away. Came straight away at me, and you said, "Jimmy, I see this all the time. All of the above. I've got something to say." <laughs> so, lay it on well, me, it's Bonnie. True. What's yeah? It, I, I don't mean to cut you off. No, no. Go ahead. I want to hear it. No, I mean it's. I noticed, um, and I have forever. One one one. 222, 333, 444, 555. Don't even look for 666 because right. it doesn't happen. But it, it, I, and my daughter, my youngest, it's every time we see those numbers on the clock, we all go, when we look at it, we go, higher state of consciousness. And we've done that since she was four. And still, and she's going to be 16 tomorrow. And so uh, every time we look at those, the sequence of numbers we look at each other and say when we're together and say higher state of consciousness and it's just i always have this feeling that there's a message being given to me every time i see those numbers in sequence and i notice that when i'm maybe driving through a neighborhood and i see somebody's address that has a sequence like that it's just it sort of has a meaning to me and um you know i I, I believe in that. Is the connection when you see a number without your daughter? Do you think of her? Is a is it a mother daughter connection uh, or? An, I think it's a higher consciousness connection. And what do you mean and by she's it? just somebody I've like brought up, brought along with, and she gets it too. I think it's just sort of something. Um, I have always had like. Uh, like I had a friend who passed away many years ago and he was my best friend in the world. And I didn't even know that he had passed away yet. And I woke up in the middle of the night and there was this vision, you know, like when you're sort of lightheaded and you see those little sparkly things. Yep. I love it. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I, I, I looked in my doorway. This is an apartment a long time ago. And there was this figure standing there, and he was he was that he was all those sparkly things. Wow! And he was 
beckoning to me. And it was kind of scary. And it was like, I don't know what that is. And, but then I knew it was like, it was George. And, and then I kind of put the covers over my head because it scared me a little bit. Um, because he and I had always said, if my husband, Steve, who I'm still married to for 30 years, but he had always said, if you and Steve get a divorce and Sheriff and I ever, one of us dies, you and I will be together forever because we were super, super good friends. And I just had this weird feeling like I'm not ready to go. So I put the covers over my head. I didn't even know he had passed away. And then his wife, Sheriff, called me the first thing the next morning and said, yeah, George passed away last night. So I believe we have connections. Was that, are you saying, uh, I want to be clear on this. Are you saying you saw that at 1111 in the middle of the night you uh, woke up? Well, I don't know exactly what time it was, but oh. I do know that it it was there and it was real. Wow. 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 And how uh, were you uh, the next day when you found out, of course, and then you made the connection with the evening before, how did that make you feel? Were you comfortable? Were you happy? Uh, what was the message? Well, um, you, I was you know? disappointed in myself that I put the covers over my head. I was disappointed in myself that I didn't uh, go give him a hug of some kind. Right, I was disappointed right. in myself. Sure. Had, has it happened again? Has he come back and said it's it, it's all good? Mm, he makes me giggle sometimes. Uh and I know it's him because of his irreverent sense of humor. I have a lot of connections, like with my grandfather. Mm-hmm. He, every time I, I find a wheat penny, he would he gave me this collection of pennies and a wheat penny. And I and I was like when I'm at my lowest times, I'll I'll find a wheat penny just sitting there um, in random places on the ground when I'm walking around the neighborhood or in the street, and I'll pick up a penny and it's a wheat penny, and I'll be okay, Grandpa. I know you're pulling for me. I'll know I'll get through this, but yeah, I, I don't know. It's, uh, and what I had told you too, this book that, um, it's called the letters. Yes. And it's, or Edwards. She, um, really interesting to me. She, uh, believes, and I believe her, she was abducted at the age of three by aliens and, gone through testing and it's kind of hard for me to articulate uh everything that's in the book it's kind of like and it's self-published so it's limited copies and um but i wanted to send you one um her she and her husband they would be visited um the story she told me they're they seem they're going to seem like unbelievable to you and to anyone listening. But after spending two years talking to her, I I I can't doubt what she's saying to me. But um, they would come to her. These messages would come through Morse code in the middle of the night. And her husband at first didn't believe her. He was like, "Oh, let me go back to sleep. You know, this is ridiculous." And then finally he was waking up and then waking her up and saying, take this down. And it was dot, dash, dash, and whatever that is. And she has like volumes of this. And, um, and it's all these messages coming through. And when I just looking at what you were doing this evening, I went back through the book and I started reading these messages. And there are so many of the messages that are coming through to us now um, through mediums and um, the messages that we need to know in this world and what we're living in and just kind of, um, and I, I don't know how to say this without sounding like crazy because I'm not, but it's about organized religion and uh, evolved souls and what's going on with the planets. And it's really... Um, it's really very interesting. I, I can't very way ahead of its time. I can't wait to read that. And I have heard uh, of this happening a couple of times. One was with uh, a child who was too young to, at the time, was uh, too young to write. You know, four years old, 
and or you know wrote very little, but he was getting Morse code messages, and he would wow. and he would write them out, and that's a whole other story. But yeah, I've heard I've, I've I've heard of this before. Absolutely crazy, Bonnie. Thank you so much. Um, I'll be in touch with you through Facebook. By the way, I saw your uh, Throwback Thursday pick today. <laughs> I'll talk to you, Bonnie. All the best. All the best. And uh, we'll be All in touch. All the best to you, Jimmy. And I look forward. It's Thursday, so I know coming Saturday I'm going to see some really good food on the grill. <laughs> you know that's right. Thank you. Bonnie Jean, Allison McNabb, everybody, one of my uh, oldest friends. Thank you. Thank you very much for calling love in. Love you, buddy. Love you. you. Love you right back, Bonnie. You know that. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. That's real cool. Uh, Bonnie and I go way back. She totally just surprised me with that call. And uh, there you go. Let's just uh, keep them going. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black with Jimmy Church. Who's calling? Where are you calling from? It's Fader Night. Yeah, this is Steve from Bluefield. Hey, it ain't it ain't it ain't Thursday without Steve from Bluefield. How are you, Steve? That's right. I'm doing good, Jimmy. How are you tonight, brother? I am doing fantastic. I'm jacked. I got fresh coffee, and I just talked to an old friend, Bonnie Jean Allison McNabb. Bonnie and I, over the years, uh, sports, man, she's a sports fanatic. No matter what I talked about, boxing, NFL, baseball, NASCAR, she had something to say. You know, <laughs> she knew her right. stuff, man. And so, and, and, well, I'm a sports fanatic, too, Jimmy. I'm just... You know that's that's my thing too, is sports. And I really, I really love boxing for the longest time. I thought I, you know, grew up. You know, we watched football, and I always played football growing up. But man, boxing! Whenever boxing come on on HBO, I grew up watching Tyson beat the far out of everybody, <laughs> and just love, <laughs> love Tyson. My dad loved Tyson. So whenever Tyson was on, we watched Tyson and then Holyfield. Yeah. I've always just been a huge boxing fan. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know, and in boxing, it just fell off. And, you know, now I won't get into to sports, whatever, but I'm just mad at, you know, um, Pacquiao can't, can't fight Mayweather. And yeah. I'm ill over that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I went round and round with Mayweather about that um, on the show. And there's plenty of video out there to, uh, to see that over the years, uh, my comments on that. But. Sports and, well, yeah, they and gave the whole, him a whole hard, hard time after his fight this weekend um, against Madonna. Um, after the fight, about him having to fight Pacquiao. Yeah, yeah. I, look, and Pacquiao's not getting. Well, neither of them are getting any younger. But, but if we don't get that fight, if the world doesn't get that fight, if they never fight, it's Mayweather's fault. I don't care what anybody says. Pacquiao was ready to and, go five years ago. Four years ago, and three May years ago. Mayweather will never be able to say he's the greatest fighter of all time without that fight. I that's right. Tell. That's right. Remember that movie, uh, Coming to America? Yeah. You remember that? You remember the boxing? Okay. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. All right? It's going to be Matt, Manny Pacquiao would have kicked his ass. <laughs> you know? Right. And that's what it's going to be. And he's going to have to live with that. So he's got to And, well, anyway, I was going to say sports – Sports and the paranormal and ufology and lost civilization and sport, it goes together, man. It goes together. I, I can get, and music, throw music in. That's, that's our generation. That's me. That's, that's right. you. That's everybody out there that listens to this show. And, and, you know, look, look at what Joe Rogan's got going on right now. Joe Rogan it figured it out too. It's, it's our generation. It's okay. It's all right. So if this show swings from from uh, <laughs> from Pacquiao, you know, to uh, to some lost civilizations, to eleven eleven and numbers and Ouija boards and ET, we all know what we what we what we enjoy, and that's that's amazing. I'm, I'm so with you on that, Steve. All right, so uh, but my number. What's is your number? Thirteen. Thirteen. I was I was born on Friday the thirteenth, Jimmy. Oh no, nineteen seventy five. I was born on Friday the thirteenth, and I always you know wore thirteen. I always do you know baseball and everything, and then done all that. And, but but you know in high school, I didn't get to to wear playing football. I didn't get to wear thirteen, but I always had you know 
like 13. And then, uh, but the ones and the twos, I would see in the middle of the night, 111 and 222, 333. For several years, it was a common, common occurrence for me to wake up. And it was constant, constant. And I would, talk, you know, ask people, do y'all wake up in the middle of the night and it's always 111 or 222 or you know, anything like that? And people look at me like, are you crazy? I don't ever get up in the middle of the night. But I would. And what was, the, what was always the time when you looked over at the clock? It would always be either 111 or 222 or, or 33 or 333 in the morning. Wow. And, you know, never during the day. Only I, I might night. see it, you know, once or twice in the day, but I never pay much attention to it. But it, at night, it was it was constant. I had a, a year or a year and a half period where it was constant, constant waking up at either one eleven in the morning or 2.22 or 3.33. And I talked to my wife about it and asked my wife, do you ever wake up, you know, and notice that the clock is all the numbers, you know, it's always one eleven or... You know, and everybody look at me like, oh, you're crazy. You know, it's just, you just, it's your biological clock. You know, you're just waking up at, at that time. I'm like, well, it's just odd to me that it's consistent. I, you know, once I'm gonna every freak two weeks out. or whatever. I'm going to freak out when it happens to me. I, I, right now I don't do it. I don't wake up. I, I wake up at night all the time. But I don't look at the clocks, and I don't uh, pay attention. But now that, you know, I, I'm just freaking myself out with this. It's probably going to start happening. Uh, I don't know what the significance. Have you ever found out what the significance of those numbers are to you? No, never. I've, they've never, I mean, anything, as far as I, I know. Huh. I don't ever. I don't feel like I've ever been in an abductee or, you know, right, right, anything of that nature. I don't. I don't feel that or you know claim that or anything. But it's just it's those numbers are something that I did see a lot for a, you know, and I still will will have that come will happen every you know maybe once a week or you know once every couple of weeks get up at 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 three thirty three or you know. Wow. Well, tonight, 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 we'll find out. Somebody's going to call in and give us the significance of those numbers, what the numbers really mean. What does 222 mean? What does 333 mean? What does 444 mean? What does 1111 mean? 1212. There's another one. You know, uh, what do these numbers mean? And uh, maybe, <laughs> or maybe you don't want to know. Steve, Maybe you just don't want to know. <laughs> but I, I know why Grant speaks so fast. Yeah, tell me real quick. You've got to think about how long he's been in in this. So thirty five years. He, you know, is what he said. <laughs> and in thirty five years, you know, he, he's seen the gamut of being poked fun of, and you know, nobody wanted to hear him talk or anything. So when he did get the opportunity to speak. He Most didn't. of the time, you know, he didn't get a three-hour show. <laughs> it was a 15 or a 20-minute <laughs> session that he got to speak, so he had to get out as much information <laughs> as he could in, in that 15 or 20-minute <laughs> time slot that he was given. Oh, so that's what, and so he learned to speak that, you know, do you not, that fast. Do you know how much email I got about that? Jimmy, you got a you got a three hour show up, man. That was amazing. <laughs> you, you, the, you you can you can slow it down, and you got six hours. You got nine hours last night out of Grant, and uh, I think everybody did. I'll tell you, um, and everybody, be patient. That's calling in. Um, uh, just be patient. Be patient. Uh, last night wore me out because I focused. I backed off of Twitter. Because normally, uh, while I'm listening to somebody, I can read Twitter, I can check email, I'm listening to the interview, I can focus, uh, uh, my phone is texting, you know, and I'm, I'm able to bounce through and stay focused. Not last night, man, or when Solaris was on. But, but last night, I just, just stared between the monitors and listened to everything that Grant had to say. 
and it was it was brutal. I mean, I got down, talk about downloads. We were talking about that last night, right? Downloads. Last night I did a camera a Grant Cameron download. <laughs> That's what I did. I just downloaded that in focus. Hey, hey, Steve, let me grab some the information. Let me grab some more calls, brother. Thank you. Always. Hey, but let, let everybody know too that the uh, Mothman um, deal that goes on at Point Pleasant every year is this weekend, I believe. Oh, it so is. If you're in the Point Pleasant, yeah. If you're in the Point Pleasant, West Virginia area, check it out. You got it, Steve. We'll talk about it. Thank you, brother. Hi, right, buddy. Let's just go to the next one. Hi, you're live. Fader night on Fade to Block with Jimmy Church. Who's calling? Where are you calling from? Hi, Jimmy. How's it going? Who's this? It's a, it's Carla. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I am doing great. 1111-222-333-444. What's your number? Well, actually, I see, I have seen sometimes that 333, and I'll see that for weeks. Other times I'll see 1111 for a few days. And I just, what I do is I, I pay attention to what's going on around that time. Right. And I find that if it's like triple threes, that means that, uh, I'm kind of low that other people can kind of, you know, uh, fuck, uh, mess with my energy, excuse my language. Right. And 11-11, um, that's like, that's when I try to put my power of intent into the uh, moment. I see 11-11, I go, okay, what do I want to see the most? Right. And that's what I'll do, I'll focus on it. It's only for, you know, less than a minute, because by the time you notice it. But anyways, Jimmy... What I wanted to tell you is two things. Mm -hmm. I'm working very close to those uh, round rocks I was telling you about. Right, right. Uh, and some somebody TV. brought somebody brought this up the other day. Um, they oh, could, really? yeah. They, well, because they couldn't remember um, uh, who called in, they just remembered what you were were telling us about. And we had oh. we had Grant Cameron on last night. And somebody said, Jimmy, you got to ask him about what that caller said. Um, and, and I didn't get to it last night with Grant, but here you are calling in tonight, and we talked about you last night. How's that for synchronicity? That's kind of weird. That's, that's wild. Hey, anyways, I'm really close to there. And I have my last weekend off this weekend, and uh, there's a, like a really, really good... Uh, Sausage factory over there, run by Mennonites. I'm going to go there, get the get the sausages for my lunches, right? And then I'm going to the rocks. I'm going out to the rocks. I'm going to photograph on a digital camera mm -hmm. and get somebody to take the. There's a little thing in a camera. I'm not sure how this stuff works, but other <laughs> people do, right? Um, the pictures and send them to you by we, email. We I have an email. We can't wait to see them now you can send them straight to me jimmy at jimmy church radio.com you can send them uh to rita rita at jimmy church radio.com and uh get them to us i'd like to see them and also i think grant would like to see them too as well grant cameron and uh yeah, i'm fascinated by him yeah he was i, I never heard of him before and he's just a couple provinces away from me that's right that's right and and i i, I can't believe Last night, it just it, you 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 heard how he was talking last night. I mean, I couldn't get anything in edgewise, so I didn't get a chance to ask him about uh, the rocks and the pyramids and the things that were going on in that coast. So, um, but take the pictures, and 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 like I said, be very specific about uh, what part of the city they are in and uh, where they are on the coast. And uh, I got to get those over to Grant. I'm so excited, and I can't wait to see him. They're not on the coast. We're on the like uh, in the foothills. Oh, the you know, foothills! foothills right, Missouri. right, 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 right. I can't wait. We're yeah. we're totally excited. And, and one other point, Jimmy, because you brought this up earlier, and I thought I have to tell Jimmy. Oh, <laughs> what's up? I have I have a friend that I haven't seen her in years. But anyway, uh, she is uh, well. She's a dominatrix. And she always does interviews with, for intake when she's 
you know, going to see a client. And one of the questions is, were you spanked as a child? And you know what, Jimmy? Yes. A lot of those people probably, she said, around 75% at least were not spanked as a child. So that's Re- something to think about. Really? Yeah. <laughs> really? I think people need to spank the kids unless they want them, you know, paying the big bucks to get someone else to do it when they're older. <laughs> Carolyn, thank you for that. That's that's something to ponder, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> you have a great night. I'm looking forward to the photographs, and we'll have them uh, uh, by the weekend. Um, I'm pretty sure because uh, I work with a lot of younger people, and they're always on their phones, so they'll know how to take a camera thing and put it in a phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what yeah, kids are. That. That's what kids are for. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, okay. Carolyn. I'll have talk to you soon. Evening. You have a great evening. Okay. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. You got to love our friends to the great white north. You just got to. You just got to. I'm going to take a quick break. It's at the top of the hour. This is Fade to Black, only on the Dark Matter Radio Network. Tonight is Fader Night, 323-825-5045. You can Skype in Fade to Black 14 That's the number 14. No spaces. I'll be back right after this. Stay with us. Are you afraid of the dark? Don't move. Don't touch that mouse. You are listening to Fade to Black, bespoke radio for the masses, on jimmychurchradio.com. Way out here, we listen to Jimmy Church on the Dark Matter Radio Network. Dark Matter. Dark Matter. Dark Matter. Dark Matter. Dark Matter. Dark matter. You're listening to Fade to Black on the Dark Matter Radio Network. ¿Qué tal, mis amigos? Yo soy Mario Carzanel, tiburón, y los invito para que escuchen a mi buen amigo Jimmy Church Radio. Claro que sí. Oi, oi, I'm Reese Evans. You're listening to Jimmy Church. This is a revolution. The revolution will not be televised. The revolution is on radio. Ciao. Fade to black. You see those pictures of Dale in front of those rock star stacks of amplifiers? He's such a rock star. Come hang out with us on Twitter at JChurch Radio. That's what you want to do. Come follow us. Hang out. Hashtag DM Radio Net. It is a phenomenon. It's insane. It's insane. Come hang out with us. I'm serious. Hashtag DM Radio Net. It's unbelievable. I, I, I say, I, I'm watching it. Click, 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 click. Everybody is engaged. It's awesome. Come hang out with us right now. Liam Boyle, right now, just popped. Liam, Australia, right now. Come hang out with all of us. At J Church Radio, hashtag DM Radio Net. It is Fader Night, everybody. Right now, okay, call a number. I just cleared them out. Let's reset. 323-825-5045. You can Skype in too. Fade to Black 14. That's my number. 14. What is yours? What is yours? I want to know. Do you wake up in the middle of the night? Do you see a number on the clock? What does it mean to you? What is that number? Has it changed your life? Does it freak you out? I think it's freaky. And I have the feeling that I'm going to start checking now. And what is, is, is there another number? Do you wake up to 428? Oh, check it out. I'm a, I got to bang this call right now. 
Donna Colvin. Donna, how are you tonight? Oh, I'm doing good. It's very rainy here in Arizona. I heard. Hey, you know what? Uh, I hope it just comes our way. Um, Well, I keep trying to push it that way, but it just sets on top of us. (laughs) (laughs) You know, Renee sent me uh, a story today, Donna, about uh, the the poison, the toxins in, in, in the Orange River. Yes. Have you heard about this? Yes, I have. That's not far from us. We're at the San Pablo River. Right. And what are you guys doing about that? I mean, that's a pretty scary story. Um, And I was going to actually read the story tonight on the air. I didn't get a chance to get to it tonight yet. But uh, now that you're on, we can talk about it a little bit. But you guys guys got some issues over there. Now, this happened over the border in Mexico with with a company down there, had a some kind of holding pond, you know, a water reservoir that was toxic and it ruptured or burst or something. And then that leaked into the water supply and the cattle are affected and the milk and the dairy industry. And, and now the farmers can't, I mean, it, tell me about it because this is the thing. It's not over here. It's not on, it's not on mainstream media. It's not been reported on the news here, but you guys have a, you guys have a problem, don't you? Well, one of the things that they're talking about is it may have been leaking for years. And um, so this spill just brought it out. Wow. And, the, um, you know, I never drink anything but filtered water because the water is so nasty here. <laughs> and um, I suggest anybody, that's what they do, filter their water because right. it's that's- just terrible. Yeah, that's all we do here, too, as well. They say that Los Angeles water is some of the safest water. No, no, I'm not buying into it. Everything is filtered. Everything we do is filtered. I drink way well, too much coffee, too. It's, it's So it's just got to be filtered. Yeah, and they, they put so many chemicals in it to make it, quote, unquote, safe, that that can kill you. So, you know, I want it filtered. So I want that toxins. Donna, what's your number? Well, I have a couple of different numbers. One is number um, five uh, throughout my whole life, five, five, five. And at night at about four, 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 almost every morning I wake up. And um, the significance with that is that's when my grandmother died. Really? And, so it, oh. and I often smell her perfume. When you see 444, you wake up in the middle of the night and you get a little waft? Yeah, she used to wear um, white shoulders. I don't know if you remember that. It's very old perfume. A lot of grandmothers used to wear it. And I smell it at 444 in the morning. It's almost like when I smell it, I just know immediately she's there. And you're cool with that? Well, yeah, because she's... Uh, letting me know that she's watching over me. And what uh, have you ever uh, woken up at four four five and not have it happen, or and missed it, or wake up at four four three and maybe wait for it and then it happens, or is it always right on four four four? Well, I can't say that I don't sometimes wake up a little bit early and then I smell it, but. As soon as my eyes open and I look over, it clicks over to 444. That's crazy. I think that is so cool. That is so cool. What I hope that it always continues. I mean, that would really be a bummer. You know, you wake up at 444 and it's not there. You know, has she ever spoken to you at 444? Any messages, anything like that? Well, I haven't actually had her speak to me. But sometimes, especially if I'm very um, upset or um, down, I will feel her, like, hug me, like her arms around me. That's so cool. That's so cool. No, that is. That is just so cool. That is so cool. I'm sure we're going to get some more phone calls like that tonight. And, uh, yeah, that is uh, really cool. Just like uh, you remember uh, when Bonnie called in earlier and she said that you know her friend had passed away but she didn't know it yet and he showed up at her door um and woke her up like that and to 
to have that happen and the next day she finds out that he passed that uh i mean that's not a you know that's not a coincidence and i think that's a great thing it's yeah. it's it's never happened to me um i'm still lucky both of my parents all all of my parents yeah, everybody knows i was i was actually adopted um but uh i know my real parents i still talk to them but um but all of my parents <laughs> all of them are still alive uh my in-laws everybody's still here everybody's still with us so um um i haven't quite experienced uh that yet um but i look forward to it because i think it's a great thing it is it's great well thank you so much donna colvin everybody donna all the best Thank you. Hi, all my fader friends. <laughs> yeah, they're they're all saying hi. You know it. Thanks, Donna. You're welcome. That's the fader not family right there. You know, it's uh, it's all friends. We're all a family. It is uh, an amazing thing that uh, uh, opens up the phone lines three two three eight two five fifty forty five. Fade to Black 14 is the Skype in number. You can also email me. Let me click over. Let me check out some email. It's Giovanni. Let's see what we got here from Giovanni. Giovanni says, brother, can you please post some pics of your wife? Haven't really seen anything of the two of you together. <laughs> yeah. We got to keep some things private, shouldn't we? I think we posted some the other day, actually. Um, uh, that's If it was up to me, there would be. go to my Facebook page. There's a bunch there. If you go to my Facebook page, there's a ton. Uh, you can certainly find them there. But um, it, none of that stuff that is released is up to me, Giovanni. <laughs> it's simply not. Uh, uh, the other day, we took some pictures. And I was like, ah, and she she grabbed my phone. Nope, nope. You're going to just send that out to the world. And uh, so we keep some things private. We really do. But you know what? I... I have a, a picture here that I'm looking at that I keep here in the studio that's framed. I should bust that out and scan it and uh, and uh, get that out. All right, another email. Let's see. This is from Mebdub. I'm reading this unsolicited. Let's see what we've got here. Last night I heard you say that you watched a video of the remote viewers viewing the Malibu Deep Underwater Base, and I heard you say uh, uh, what was inside. Tell us on the uh, tell us on the air. I am so interested. Okay, that was done by thank you. Um, that's from Ed Hake. Uh, thank you for that, um, Edward Reardon. R I O R R I O R D O N. I think that's it. Uh, Edward Reardon. Um, it was the RV that did that, and you can go to. I'll just speak now. Rita Walanda um, post uh, Edward's uh, video on Twitter and send me the link, or or I'll uh, forward this email back to you, and you can send uh, Ed here the link, but. What he saw on the inside, he said that um, there was a tunnel on the back of the entrance to the Malibu Deep Underwater Base. And there was a, a tunnel that went back, a small tunnel that went back and went into a larger room. And inside of that larger room, now I spoke to Ed about this directly on the air here after I saw the video. And that that tunnel went back, went to a very large room, and that there was life in that room. But he said that the life was green. He wasn't getting some type of VT presence or human presence, for that matter. But there was it was it was green and open and full of oxygen, and that's what he saw. Um, there was some other details. I don't want to give too much more of it away because it's a lot of fun for you to watch that video. Um, he also said that there was a, a door or something that was covering the entrance. And he didn't know if that was from a long time ago or from today, that maybe it was some kind of glass wall or something. Um, I saw that as water. That's kind of the vibe I got, I think he got a little bit of a different vibe. But uh, what's interesting, and thank you for the email, Ed. Uh, what's interesting is the way that uh, the Malibu, the, the picture, the target that was in the envelope, 
which was the one that uh, Dale and I published out to the world, um, that very first Malibu picture, the front view, is in the lower right-hand corner of the video. Um, so you can see that. And while you're watching Ed do his remote viewing and he's drawing and he's slowly zeroing in on the bay, you can see it. It's, it's scary. And you've got to watch that uh, RV video. Um, I remember that night. I was like the seventh or eighth person that has seen it. Now it's uh, it's a pretty popular video now. Um, so we'll get that link up uh, to you, Ed. All right. Let's see. Christopher from Scotland. Scotland in position, Mr. Jimmy Sir. Yes. Right now, tonight. Wow, that just came in from Scotland. I should... Um, You know what? I'm going to do this in real time. Watch this. I'm going to reply back to Scott in Scotland. I'm going to say, you're going to hear me tap this out. What is the boat looking like? And (laughs) what did you vote? What what did you vote? Let's see if I get a response back from Scotland. I know he's uh, listening in real time right now to the show. All right. Now, uh, Scotland, that's a pretty interesting thing that's going on right now. As you know, right now in Scotland, they are voting to succeed, to separate from the United Kingdom. What is that? Northern Ireland. uh, You have Northern Ireland, Wales, Scotland, and Britain. And they're going down. They're going at it. And I was checking a, a couple of things. Number one. There are 4.2 million people registered to vote on this today in Scotland. There's only 5.3 million people in the country. Everybody in Scotland can vote. (laughs) As a matter of fact, you can be 16 and vote in Scotland on this referendum right now to separate from the UK. And that is nuts. I was listening to some of the commercials today that uh, Scotland had put out in reverse, reverse speech or reverse sentences and then forward sentences. Pretty frightening stuff. I don't know. The update that I got right before airtime, which is about an hour ago, hour and 15 minutes ago, was uh, 15 or 54 percent. Now, this was uh, a sample poll of 19,036 voters, just under 54% of the total choosing to stay part of the union. That's right. And uh, that's, uh, it was, uh, I, I, uh, do you really want to separate? I don't know. I mean, that's a, that's, that's a, that's a moral decision that they're going to have to make over there. I can't imagine what the Queen and Buckingham Palace and West, what are they saying about this? And how do they feel? It's kind of weird, man. It's like Texas. Texas separating from us. I don't know what, uh, it's it's going down. I'm going to get an update uh, during the break, and uh, we'll see. Now, we were just talking to Donna about this. Now, this is um, the mine spill um, over in Mexico, and it's right there. It's on the border. And it uh, it's devastating to the to the farmers there, and they're worrying about the future. Nobody's buying their milk and their cattle. They have to continue milking because they have to keep the cows healthy. But uh, this is this is part of uh, this is part of the press release. Growers, cattle ranchers, and dairy farmers such as. Uh, Acuna, this one guy that was interviewed, uh, this farmer, are bearing the brunt of man-made uh, ecological disaster after 40,000 cubic meters of acid-laced copper sulfate and heavy metals spilled into the river from a mine on August 6th. Grupo Mexico, the massive mining conglomerate which owns the Buena Vista del Cobra mine in northern Sonora, Sonora Initially said it was due to heavy rains, but later said it was due to a structural failure of the containment pond. Mexican Environmental Minister Juan Jose Guerrera 
called it the worst natural disaster provoked by the mining industry in modern history in Mexico. It's nuts. It's left 22,000 people along the Sonora River without regular running water. Everything's got to get filtered. The, uh, the cattle, we're talking farming, the water supply, vegetables, agriculture, life in general is literally shut down. And that river feeds into the Orange River, which goes into Arizona. Check that out. That's that's absolutely frightening. I've got a bunch of other email and some other stuff I'll get to right after the break. Keep holding. Keep holding. If you've called in, I will get to your calls. All right. 323-825-5045. It is fader night. What is your number? 1111 222 333. What does it mean to you? Taking your calls next on Fade to Black. I'll be back right after this. Stay with us. Hi, everybody. This is Rob Halford, the Metal God, on JimmyChurchRadio.com. What's up? My name's Brian Taylor, Ninja Badass Extraordinaire, and this is JimmyChurchRadio.com. Hey, J-C-R, in your face. JimmyChurchRadio.com. On the Dark Matter Radio Network. Fader Night. Fader Knight, 323-825-5045. Can Skype in, fade to black 14. That's my number. What is yours? My number is 14. I told you why. And 14 is just all through my life. I mean, I look down, I think, I hear somebody say something, I read, whatever. 14 pops up all the time. I don't know if it's my mind that there's other numbers that I ignore. I don't know. But for me, it's 14. That's my number. What is yours? Fortunately, there's no 14 on my clock. Well, I guess, but there's no 14, 14. So I don't see that. I don't. I don't. And I don't wake up in the middle of the night and check the clock. I'm afraid when I do, I'm going to start. I see it happening. Okay. All right. Uh, let's just uh, let's uh, yeah. Let's just keep banging calls. I was going to get to some other stuff. But let's do it. Hi, it is Fader Night. You are live on Fade to Black with Jimmy uh, Church. Yeah. Who's calling? Where are you uh, calling from? This is Nick from uh, California. Hi, Nick from California. What part of California? Uh, Central. Central California. You know, hey, yeah. uh, uh, no fires yet there, right? Oh, no, but we uh, recently we had a fire just above us and, like, uh, below us, so we were like right in the middle, almost. Yeah, did you hear that they arrested somebody up there today for arson? Did oh, you? I didn't hear about that. Yeah, yeah, they arrested him, and he's he's being held on like ten million dollars bond. And if, think about every everything that is going to happen, monetary wise or injuries, firefighters, if uh, you know. Heaven forbid somebody dies, but uh, he's yeah. he's through. He's done because when he goes to prison, he he will have burnt down some some prisoner's family's house. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's oh man, uh, I can't. I don't know what would motivate somebody to do something that stupid. I mean, that yeah. dumb. I mean, that's really just absolutely dumb. And I don't know what the motivation is, but here in California, and Nick, you know, you know what it's like. Once a year, we go up in flames. And uh, down here, we haven't had anything for the last, you know, two years. But here, because we're surrounded by mountains in the valley on, on all sides, uh, they the vegetation dries out. 
and it and it goes up in flames and houses are it's 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 crazy and we deal with it and when it does go down it's like sitting in a movie theater in that you can't not see it you know what i mean it's everywhere that you go you just turn around and there's mountains and you're watching it on fire and you're watching these yeah. these courageous firefighters and it's uh it's insane but just be safe up there central valley you guys dry out there this time of year, and it's so, so, so hot. Um, just be yeah. safe. All right, all right. So, uh, Nick, what's your number? Um, uh, that's what I'm calling. I, I, I don't really mean, know what you mean by number, and uh, uh, I, I, I was interested in what really the state or not where are, uh, you know, um, well, okay. Well, well, what do you mean by that? Uh, like, I know it's like a group uh, or whatever, but um, you know, like, I guess uh, I, I picture it as a sort of like a psychedelic community. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Fade or not? Okay, is is like astronaut, right? Cosmonaut. Fade or not? N a u t. Like astronaut, and yeah. they um, uh, we started to um, on Twitter and Facebook and so forth. This community of people that uh, uh, listens listens to the show every single night. They decided to months ago, months ago, to name the group, and they wanted to call themselves something. They were dedicated and. Uh, we had a contest, sort of, and we ran a bunch of names by. Uh, I had nothing to do with it. This is all them. This is you. You're you're a fade or not? You call into the show. You're a fade or not? That's 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 it. Yeah. So, okay. um, and and that's what it is. And it, it's not psychedelic. I'm sure some of them are, but um, but that's what it is. It's the community of the people that listen to this show. And, yeah. um, it, it is so cool when you go now, how do you become a fader on? How do you become official? That's up to the family. So just come and hang out, participate. Um, and when I say that, just come over to, t uh, Twitter and, and hang out and talk to everybody because there's literally, I don't even know if we're into the thousands yet, but it certainly seems pretty close to that. Um, we probably do every single night and you have to go over, go over to, uh, if you don't use a uh, tweet deck, go over to dark matter Um, and you can listen to the show from there, but there, the Twitter feed is on that page and that's the hashtag DM radio net Twitter feed. And those are all the fader knots and you can see it's best that you see exactly what I'm talking about. Click, click, click. You see all the tweets. You see everybody talking, having fun, talking about what we're talking about on the show, throwing questions out at me, uh, the questions amongst themselves, um, experiences, posting pictures. Um, all of that happens, and that's what a fade or not is. Does that help you out? Yeah, that helps out a lot. Um, yeah, I saw you listen to... Uh, uh, it on your show on the Dark Matter Radio website. So uh, I, I noticed a, a Twitter uh, feed at the bottom of it. Um, but yeah, uh, it's pretty that's, crazy. That's pretty cool. yeah. yeah, it's pretty crazy to see that Twitter feed go and blast like it does every single night. It is a phenomenon. Have you ever seen a Twitter feed do that? <laughs> it's pretty crazy. It? It's just yeah. like, you know, you really have to keep up with it. And it's it's a lot of yeah. fun. And each one of those little feeds that clicks by, you'll probably notice that there's a whole conversation that's going on inside of that. And it's pretty yeah. it's pretty cool. Come hang out with us, Nick. Everybody, watch yeah. this. Watch this, Nick. Watch Twitter right now. I'll say this. Everybody, say hi to Nick. That's all you gotta do. Now watch this. <laughs> Just watch Twitter. And, 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 and are you on Twitter? Yeah. Okay. What's your Twitter handle? Uh, it's at Mickey Charming. At Mickey, Nikki, N-I-C-K, 
I E or Y? N I C K Y. And what's the last name? Uh, Shaman. Spell it. S H A M A N. That's it. Nikki Shaman. Okay, everybody. Now, yes. are you watching the Twitter feed right now? Look at that. Hi, Nick. Yes. Hi, Nick. 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 There's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. <laughs> They're gonna keep on coming, brother. Seventeen, eighteen. Yeah. All right. Welcome to the family, okay. Nick. You are now a fader not. Nikki Shaman. There it is. You just got your first at right there, Nikki Shaman. That came in from Jonas, and Jonas is um out of New York City. That is what oh. is so great about this show. You are now a fade or not. Yeah. Welcome, Nikki. Great. How Thank do you, you uh, how do you feel, brother? Well, I mean, I I, I love uh being in these sort of uh types of communities uh with like minded people. That's it, and that's what this show is about. That's what this show is about. Nikki, call back anytime. I'm gonna keep banging calls, man. Go go hang out in uh in, in tweet deck in, in the Twitter feed right now and go say hi to everybody. All right. Okay. Thank you. All the best. Nikki, call back anytime. I'm going to keep banging calls. <laughs> oh, star hey, six. Have- star six. What's up? Oh, man. <laughs> you will never believe this story. Did I just hear a first time caller? Uh, no, no, we had a few tonight. Donna Colvin well, was well, a Nikki, first, Nikki's a first time caller. Yeah. Wow. With Nikki, a last name like that. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. really going to be surprised. Yeah, I'm telling you. No, Bonnie. He's already out there. He, he just doesn't know it yet. Yeah. Bonnie Jean, first time caller tonight. Carol. Um, uh, oh no, not Carolyn. I'm sorry. But, uh, Donna Colvin, uh, mm. a long time fade or not, but I think that's the first time she called in and, uh, and uh, and Nikki, yeah, yeah, absolutely, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Guy, I love. Well, yeah, but you do, you do give them the disclaimer, don't you? You do warn them. What's that? <laughs> well, any first time caller, you've got to warn them. They're going to be addicted. Yeah, I know, right? Oh man, I forgot. Hey, Nikki, if you're <laughs> listening right now, uh, we'll get you a Space Boy CD. Um, uh, Walanda. Uh, hook up, uh, hook up, Nikki with a Space Boy CD. Well, I'm so. glad you brought that subject up. I, I'm, st- I, you know what? When you mentioned about your emails going to the producers and everything getting leaving you out of the loop, <laughs> I, I remember I still haven't received my my signed uh, uh, album, um, the movie. Oh yeah, we have a stack of stuff. Um, we have look. It's been a little bit busy around here. And, yeah, a little and, bit. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell? <laughs> but uh, we have a whole stack of stuff that is that that is uh, uh, here at the studio, packaged up, ready to go, and and it's it's my bad. So I'll take care of everything this weekend. Everybody will get uh, what they've got coming to you. Hey, well, um, real I, quick, I just didn't... I've got you on the phone, um, but just let me say, Ken, uh, to Ken Lipson, somebody was mentioning to me earlier today did i see or figure out who your picture was of today i have not so ken repost the picture from today so i can see it on twitter and uh and here by the way uh and the reason why i bring that up star six is ken just posted his picture of everyone's invisible (laughs) for you and it's really cool, and it says Star Six, and they just posted it on Twitter. It is absolutely well, amazing. Well, I'm glad the man finally is tuned into the real frequency, because, gentlemen, we all are invisible. <laughs> uh, I, hey, I, I wanted to bring up something about the number 14. Okay. You're not going to believe this. Hold on to your hat. Oh, don't freak me out. No, no, I want to be freaked out, Star. You do? Yeah, hand it to me. Oh, well, wait a minute. I'm going to change subjects then. No, no, no. Bring, oh, you can't okay. start well, off. You can't do team. that. You can't do that. I certainly can. I got a lot of thoughts in my head at one time. <laughs> Ready? Yes. Okay, 14. <clears throat> Boy, since you don't know who Star 6 is, 
Um, it'll take you a while to figure this out. But you and I have a lot in common. Number one. I mean the number one as in 14. Okay. Uh, under the law of one, that's who you are. Agreed? Okay. And you're the number one talk radio show in the world. Okay. That's a fact, Jack. I, it's, it's debatable. I'm with so you on that. Not. I'm I with got, you. I'm with I you. I do a different thing with your ions, and we are learning about ions. Boy, Grant, just about the lymphatic came alive with that guy. <laughs> Anyhow, um, four. Well, four was a yellow submarine Indy car. And I happen to be personally related to that Indy car, better known as the yellow submarine. What? And yes, what year? Spin this year. Yeah, what year? Which year? Which? Uh, of IndyCar. Oh, you, well, the Yellow Submarine originally was the uh, car belonged to Johnny Rutherford, three-time winner. Yeah, yeah. Well, he had uh, he had number three, number two, he, three. Three was the Yellow Submarine. Yeah, three was the the Yellow Submarine. That's the one that I uh, uh, I saw him race that car so many times. Excuse me, excuse me. I got it turned around. Four was Rutherford's number, and then this year, the submarine came out again under your guy, and that was number three. I'm sorry. Really? I yeah. Did, oh, I, yeah. No, I don't make this stuff up. I did not know that. Well, I know. That's how Comstar start <laughs> six has to keep track of all your talk radio hosts. Okay. Now, number <laughs> now, I, I am personally associated with that through another reason, um, and I, you should have Johnny Rutherford on your show. I would love to have him on the show. That guy can handle a mic better than Art Bell. Yeah, he Johnny Johnny's right there. I would like to have AJ Ford on the show too. That's a. That's would a, you like me to recommend they call you? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. you got a deal. Absolutely. Okay, now I want to get back to Grant last night. You know, I really, I I I know everybody was kind of making fun about how fast he was talking, but. What he was doing was hitting the turbo drives, and his ions were just firing off in that brain of his, and he kind of hit a slow point, and that's called the vocal cords. Uh, it's it's really not – he was talking fast. It was – listeners weren't listening fast enough. And besides that, all Canadians know the rules. Americans never could listen, right? Right. And, and yeah, Americans all know that nobody in Canada knows how to play hockey. So, you know, it's been going on for decades, hundreds of years, thousands of years. No matter what you do with a Canadian, they still have a hard time with a stick in their hand. I don't oh, know why. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. I'm sure Canada's going to tonight. Well, wait a minute. They already did. Canada really loves you now. I don't know why. You must have said something really nice about him last night. I love Canada. I love Canada. This is the thing. Star Six, this is the truth. I, I have I have been to most most of the major cities in Canada, um, period. Many 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 times. I did a lot of public speaking up there, and uh, I've got a lot of friends up there. I've been to little towns like Kelowna. Mm -hmm. um, I've been to Saskatoon. Uh, I mentioned the other day I've been to Regina. I've been to Jean Kier. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I've just, I love Canada. I can't tell you how many times I have been to Vancouver, North Vancouver. There is a, a steakhouse I used to eat at over North Vancouver all the time. Um, I've probably been to Vancouver proper. Uh, I don't, I don't even know 10, 20 times. Um, and then all the other cities, you know, Edmonton, I've been all over Alberta, I've been all over Winnipeg. I've been all over Saskatchewan. Um, uh, that's Western Canada and, and then Eastern Canada, Toronto and, and young street. I mean, these are, these are places that I love. I love Canada. Canada is great. Well, I, Canada is built for human beings. That's why, I mean, there's <laughs> I only 33 million people on the whole landmass. And they treat each other right. And it doesn't matter what color they are. No, you're absolutely right about that. And not only that, when it comes to a boogie, I'm going to tell you something. Speaking as the official crying wolf, every native in Canada loves every American. 
You think so? Well, there's always one asshole in the group that pisses them <laughs> off, but that's okay. Uh, you think so? I th- oh, yeah, they love them. Uh, they, they, the, way, the, way they, the way Canadians think is this way. The first time you meet me, you don't know me, but I like you anyhow, and I forgive you. Let's move on because we're going to develop a relationship. That's a Canadian. I'll go with that. And what you did last night, they really loved. Remember at the beginning of the show, somebody's in trouble. The family jumps in there, and the family helps. Seven thousand five hundred bucks, no matter what. Right. That is Canadian. Right. It's not American. No, I, 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 yes. Well, now come on, I got to pump it up. You got to have something to talk about. Yeah, tonight. yeah, yeah. Yes and no. I mean, <laughs> I, I see. There's a there's a weird thing. Um, and Star Six, you know, I love you. And and the show loves you. I've got like six calls stacked up, so oh, I'm gonna no. I'm gonna go and bang. But I will say this: um, the the love hate relationship that goes on between Canada and the United States, we recognize. And there's the same thing. And I'll say this right now on this show: the same thing that goes down between Canada and the United States goes down between Los Angeles and San Francisco. What do I mean by that? San Fran- uh, Los Angeles barely knows that there is a city up there called San Francisco. Okay, and this is and 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 what am I saying? Well, you go up to San Francisco and you're from Los Angeles, and you just go up and you go into a restaurant and and you know, hey, what's going on? And you think, as an Angelino, um, that it's all good. And it's not because when they go, oh, you're from out of town, you know the waitress, waiter, yeah, oh, where are you from, Los Angeles? The conver- the fr- the friendliness stops. They don't dig it, and and as an Angelino, you go, what what did I say something wrong? What what did I say? Well, you said you were from Los Angeles. See, down here in L.A., we don't get that. We don't understand. San Francisco thinks that. Los Angeles hates San Francisco like they hate us. And we don't. We don't. We don't. We love San Francisco. We don't even know San Francisco's there. And it's this weird relationship that goes on between the two cities. And everybody knows it. I'm not, this isn't, I'm not planting a flag on something. I'm not inventing something. I'm not creating, I'm not discovering something. This has been going on for years. And it's a fascinating thing. It's bizarre. If San Francisco only knew how much we love San Francisco and how much we don't care that they hate us. I mean, it's the exact opposite. Then they would, I think they would feel bad, but they don't know that they, there's this thing that if you're from LA and you live up there, you're just supposed to not like, you, you know, it's, it's crazy. And the same well, thing goes on I, between I, Canada and the United States. I, I'd spend a lot of time down in Los Angeles and also San Francisco myself. In fact, I used to do a lot of stuff with the Rolling Stones. One of the things I can tell you is this. Uh, the reason they feel that way is because Hollywood, pretty L.A. is pretty much the entertainment center in their brain. But the truth is uh, everybody from L.A. sneaks up to San Francisco to get on the stage and have a good time. The, the only thing is the stages in, in San Francisco – don't get broadcast like they do in ha- down in Westwood or that territory. Right, so right, right. what right. you got is if you're from L.A. and you show up in San Francisco, there's only one stage you can dress for. You better come and drag, man. <laughs> oh, that's uh, star you're, six, everybody. You'll have a great time. <laughs> I guarantee it. And they'll love you for that. Uh, star six, everybody. Thank you, star. Yeah, you're welcome. All the best. Hey, Johnny Rutherford, don't forget. Don't you forget. I'll talk to you. Bye. Let's keep it going. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. This is Fader Night with Jimmy Church. Who's calling? Where are you calling from? Hello, Hello Jimmy. This is Alex Mistretta. Ah, Alex. Hey, man, can you get off the speakerphone? Uh, I'm, I'm on that. So let me switch to the regular phone. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's all right. Better. Is it better now? Uh, it's, uh, it's the same. All right. Uh, let me... You got to be quick, Alex. How's that better? Oh, there you are. Alex Mistretta, everybody, from UPARS, ex-MUFON. I will always call you UPARS, ex-MUFON. 
Do you think? Hey, That's fine. Hey, Alex, do you think that uh, you'll ever go back to MUFON? Yeah, possibly. Okay. Um, yeah, I was uh, originally uh, I was talking to Ruben Uriarte, which I believe you know pretty well. Yes. And, you know, he was doing some work for, for International MUFON, and I was kind of interested in that aspect because that's kind of like, you know, my area of expertise. So if something comes up with Ruben, I would definitely go back to MUFON. You know, he's a friend and a great researcher, so yeah. I mean, they need you. You pars need you. I mean, everybody needs you. But uh, I mean, I, I was uh, talking uh, uh, this week to a couple of people from MUFON, and, uh, and that subject came up. And, you know, I just, I think MUFON is, you know, they need, they just need quality people. They do. It's, uh, what they do yeah. is good, but you know, right now, uh, you're yeah, with I mean, UPARS and, and UPARS is, uh, uh, is a great organization too, as well. What have you guys got going on there, uh, this Tuesday? Uh, we had, it was kind of like a share night where, uh, people just came up and, uh, gave their own experiences, you know, like for 10 minutes, it was just, uh, for the crowd, so. And how, like Thursday night. How, how was it? How, yeah, right, right. How what, Did you have a time limit on everybody? Yeah, five minutes, which, you know, turned to five, ten minutes. Right. And then there's a little, you know, a few questions, that sort of thing. So uh, it worked out pretty well. You know, people turn out to be more eloquent than I anticipated. Right. You know, because, you know, in this field, sometimes you get, you know, some individuals. But all in all, it actually went really well. I think people really enjoyed it. Have you ever thought about, and you should talk to Murillo about this, or maybe I'll mention it too. Have you guys ever thought about moving that to a um, Saturday night or a Sunday night instead of Tuesday? Yeah, we have. We've talked, we've talked about it, and, you know, the talks kind of died down. I'm not sure why exactly, but... Um, because then, yeah, I, but I can, then I can go. See, that's the thing. I broadcast on Tuesday nights, and I miss... The only way I can go to a UPARS meeting is if I broadcast or if I speak. <laughs> if, I don't, if I don't broadcast or speak. See, before, a year ago, this show didn't do Tuesday nights. We did Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Right. Now we're all week long. So Tuesday's yeah. out. Tuesday's out, no matter what. And so I'm either speaking at UPARS or broadcasting from there. Other than that, I can't attend. So yeah. maybe you guys should move it to Saturday night or Sunday night. Uh, either night works for me. And then I can go and attend. Like this, this, uh, this Saturday, Grant Cameron's going to be here with Ciro, and they do theirs on Saturday night. So it's a no-brainer for me. I'm going to go hang out with Yvonne Smith and Grant and Stephen Bassett will probably be there and Jason Lamb. I'll be there. Yeah, you'll be there, and uh, because it's a Saturday night, you know what I mean? Yeah. How is Jason doing? I haven't talked to him. Oh, I haven't either. I'm not sure, to be honest with you. Well, he'll be there Saturday for sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to Grant. Um, so this last uh, Tuesday, you guys had an open mic night with the audience, and people got to step up and speak about their experiences. Anything uh, that you want to talk about? Anything really cool? Yeah, actually, uh a gentleman approached me. He actually, he wanted to go up and speak publicly. So he talked to me privately to myself and Steve. And he's like, Hey, he's like, do you ever investigate sightings around the Malibu area? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, oh. a little bit. Oh, man. I'm like, you know, Hi, what you got? Um, he's like, well, I've been getting a lot of sightings up there, uh, in evening time. I'm like, well, I'm actually on the case, you know, out there right now. And we've got some other things in the works and neighborhood. I go, um, where? I'm like, when you would happen to be Point Doom by any chance? He's like, no, actually, it's actually uh, next door to that. And um, I'm like, well, often you have exciting things, like every week. I'm like, okay, you know, I've heard this one before, but he sounded like real legitimate, all that. And so Steve and I are going to go up there if we get some actually night vision equipment that that gentleman has. And we're going to have a little stakeout in the Malibu area and see what he's been seeing. Has he been taking pictures? People are going to think uh, that are listening to the show right now, like this is some kind of set up call. Oh and yeah, it, and it's not. I I'm like, I'm a plant. You <laughs> yeah, know, you're I'm a plant. plant for Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. But the truth is, I've been on the Malibu case for about ten years. You know. Yeah. But, right. 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 And on top of that, you and I haven't talked in a week. I mean, I count on you coming in with your special reports on Thursday, but I had no idea yeah. about this, and that is really, really cool. Did he have any pictures? Yeah. I, um. Yeah, he said he has some pictures, but he didn't bring them. So uh, he gave me his number, and you know we got to hook up. 
and then spend uh, some time up there and I can check out his evidence and all that. Very and, cool. And, yeah. you, you, you've got to keep me posted on that. And well, I know you will. Yeah, you, but... always, you're, you know, everything goes to you. You're from the first, uh, you get first dibs. So what else, uh, what else have you got for us tonight, Alex? Um, that's it. Unless, you know, have you seen any of my posts? Is there anything you want to have any questions or? Well, no, that, that I'm glad you don't because I got to throw something out at you. The theme of yeah. the night tonight is numbers. Do you ever, okay. do you ever know what's your, what's your number? Do you have a special number? Uh, probably seven. I, uh, I was born the 27th. I live at 2747. My proper number is seven. It's like the seven comes up all the time everywhere. Wow, that's weird. Did you pick right. apartment seven, or was it given to you? No, uh, complete serendipity. Wow, that's weird. That is totally weird. Okay, and yeah. what about, uh, do you ever wake up in the middle of the night to, like, 11, 11, 12, 12, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4? All right, here's where it gets weird. At least three times a week, if not four, 3 o'clock or 3.15 on the dot, a.m. Really? Possibly. Now, yeah, I yeah, was cool. I, I was waiting for this phone call. I'm glad that you did that because yeah. 1111 is one thing, you know, 333. Um, yeah. I get that. And there's obviously with numerology, there's got to be a lot of significance to that different for, uh, you know, people. But I was waiting for that call that somebody said, I wake up every night at 3 o'clock on the dot. I wake up every night at 315. So for you... Three o'clock or three fifteen on the dot. Do you, is it because of your? Do you feel your body's acclimated to it, and now it's just your internal clock is doing it, or is that number significant to you for some reason? No, it has no particular significance. But yeah, I mean, certain extent you have to think it's a circadian rhythm, right? Your body's acclimated to waking up at that time. But even when the time changes, I don't wake up at four or four fifteen or two or two fifteen. I still wake up at three or three fifteen. Oh, really? Now see that's weird. Yeah. You need right? to you need to look up that number, three fifteen, and see what it means. Well, I you know, supposedly it's a three or two fifteen is the hour of the devil. Is it in really that occult circle? Yeah, correct, yeah. Okay, I'm I'm gonna watch Twitter for that one. Anybody know about three fifteen being uh a devil number, an occult number, 315. What is the significance of that? I love Twitter. I love this family that we have. I say it every night, but it, I, I love Thursday nights, man. I just love it. Yeah. I'm I, curious, too, because I, I haven't actually done a whole lot of research on it, but that's what I've been told. In any case, I've come across you know, that people saying it's the hour of the devil. So I don't know. Now, next up for you, Pars, um, is David Polites. Correct on uh, disappearances in the woods. He, his the- his research. Um, I those of us that that know of David's research in his book. Those of us that know it, he is uh, he's on to something. There is something he's on to something, and he's really the only the only source of this research and type of information, but he is super ultra respected. Yeah, correct. It's, you know, it's, it's weird because it's a subject Steve and I have talked about throughout the years about the number of disappearances out in the woods people you never hear about. And the number always seems really high. And we always said there's nobody that really does this kind of research. And, but there is, it's this guy. And he's the only one that I'm aware of. And, and tell us about it. Uh, what uh, for those that aren't familiar with David? And I hate it when a host says that. For for those that don't know, tell us about it. But it is important. Please tell 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 everybody what David is about. Well, essentially, I'm not like I said, I'm not an expert. But he's he's been able to correlate uh, certain areas where where they have a reputation for UFO activity or anomalous phenomena or even Bigfoot reports. Even though personally, I I don't agree with him on that point, but, and a number of disappearances of children, hikers, but not just, you know, people where they'll find their clothes or they'll find footprints. People just really disappear and never hear from ever again. And I can't quite recall the number he gave me, but it was huge. And there's a geographical distribution to the, to the uh, disappearances. It's not, it's not random. It's all in very specific areas. 
And I mean, you know, you can do like a P test, a statistical test, and it's definitely higher than due to chance, you know. And that becomes really interesting. And one of the things that he reports on, as uncomfortable as it is, is state parks. You know, families go out, they're on vacation, kid wanders off, and there's a connection to it. I mean, kid disappears, or or a loved one, or a boyfriend, or a girlfriend, family member, or father, mother disappears, and 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 he connects the dots to that disappearance. Could be a Bigfoot sighting, uh, UFO activity, um, but he that's his research, and it seems to be mainly, like I said, uh, uh, state parks. And family vacations. Yeah, correct. It's not in the middle of nowhere where there's, you know, where very few people go to. They're not specifically dangerous area from a you know natural standpoint. These are state parks. You're right. It's, they're not even that far from like the parking lot. Some of these spots. Yes. And yet people just disappear with you know, and they're never seen again. Somebody just posted three plus one plus five equals nine. Completion. Huh. Chew on that one, Alex. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Liam Boyle, yeah, he just posted David's stuff is uh, creepy. It's very creepy. And yeah. David's stuff is black and white. That's the thing. He connects the paranormal to it, but right. the disappearances themselves, these are factual. This isn't a, a, a abduction case of of uh, E.T. or you no, that's not what he deals with. He deals with some tragedy and it's, exactly. uh, I mean, you know, there's actual figures of people disappearing. It's kind of like, it's like the, to me, it's like a cumulation phenomenon. You actually have physical proof that something is going on. Right. And that's a good start. Yeah. Cortana just said once a month, you pars, I should do a broadcast night out there. Well, the thing is once a month is when you pars meets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good. Uh, could you imagine uh, if I did that every single Tuesday? Oh, I'd be worn out. Oh, they would get sick of it anyway. But uh, but I enjoy broadcasting from UPARS. That is just uh, that is a cool thing. When I go and hang out there, I mean, it's just UPARS, which is uh, which separated from MUFON. So the community that is there, uh, it's a combination of paranormal ghost, you know, paranormal activity with uh, ufology. So you have you have a broad mix of, of everything paranormal, and that's what uh, UPAR stands for. Yeah, but that was kind of the idea. Originally, actually, I wasn't going to stay with UPAR. So I was going to leave and kind of go on, and I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And, you know, one of the ideas was that because I'm involved in so many of these different subjects, from, you know, the paranormal to cryptozoology, that Steve thought, well, let's venture out and let's grow, you know, let's over everything and i thought it was a great idea for everybody out there i'm going to grab this next call as i say good night alex say bacon for everybody i will love bacon <laughs> i'll talk to you <laughs> alex mistretta right. everybody thank you alex hi right, jimmy i'll talk to you have Bye. a good night hi you're live on fade to black fader night with jimmy church who's calling uh, this is bear hey bear how are you tonight Oh, I'm doing okay. Uh, I'm calling in to kind of give you a little ribbon, and then I'm gonna. I got some stories of corporal punishment. Oh, um, <laughs> but um, uh, IMO. Um, Jimmy stands up, pants falls down to ankles. No, oh, stop. <laughs> bacon, yeah, bacon. <laughs> so, hey, hey, bear. Um, what's your number? Uh, my phone number? No, your number. The subject of tonight is numbers. Do you wake up in the middle of the night uh, at the same time? Oh, I get woke up in the middle of the night every night. I get a dog jumping on my ribs, take him out to go potty. Okay. 314. At 314, <laughs> that's your number. Yep. Interesting. And does that number mean anything to you? Um. Yeah, actually, actually, it's um, somebody's birthday. Okay, all right, and, and and it's a significant person because you know their number. So it's March fourteenth. Whose birthday is it? It's my sister's. Your sister's birthday, and is she still with yes. you? Is she still with us? Yeah. 
Does she know that you wake up at 314 every single night? No. Well, she I never told her that, but the dog tells me that. Well, <laughs> she knows now. <laughs> she knows now. 314. You should um so what you should do and I'm going to find out shortly here on Twitter, I'm sure. Somebody's going to tell me what 314 means and tell tell you what 314 means. Um but uh, you well, should 314, let's see. 3 and 1 is uh 4 and 4 is 8. And uh let's see. That's kind of like towards the end of things like a new beginning, so Okay. okay. Uh, like I said, yeah, right. And somebody's going to tell us in just a second, and I'll let you know. So, yeah, okay. You said you had a corporal punishment story. Oh, yes. I've had many of them. Let's see. Uh, my grandmother, okay, when I was little, she would turn around and pinch me by the ear when I was doing something I wasn't supposed to do. And she would kind of drag me back into the house. Um, let's see. Uh, my dad always had a razor strap, and it had holes drilled into it, so it sounded a whole lot more than it uh, it was, you know. Um, uh, then there was a time when I was at school, and I was kind of nodding off, and I got a slap across the old hand with the ruler. <laughs> so, which, um, which was then my wife one time. Okay, she was telling me that. Um, she was going to get a spanking with a belt from her daddy, and he pulled this belt off, and the belt buckle turned around, and it popped off and slammed them right where it hurts, and she had to ask her mom, how come dad left the room like that? I didn't get my spanking. And she goes, well, dad got it in this very sensitive spot, and you had to leave the room. Uh, And she didn't have a clue what that meant, but... uh, you know, and then my grandma, okay, she would always, when she'd get mad at my dad, even when I was growing up, she had a cast iron frying pan and she was going to, uh, say, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to chase you down and I'm going to cold cock you with this, this dog on uh, cast iron frying pan. So well, bacon. And, uh, <laughs> that's about where, uh, that is. You know, I'll, this is this is what's really strange. I grew up, and I, I'm going to have to reach back to our older listeners. In school, well, I am an it, older listener. Yeah, well, but what okay. I mean is, what what I mean is, in school, we all got whacked. We all got paddled. Every teacher had a paddle that they would display, and I'm talking about public schools, not private schools. I mean. I mean you walked in. So and, I. Yeah, and they, they had, had a paddle, and uh, they displayed it. Yeah, absolutely. They it the Board of Education. All, all, I, we had this, uh, I'll never forget, we had this P.E. coach in Indianapolis at uh, PS103. I'll think of his name here in a second. And he, uh, he would write demerits down. He had a little book. And at the end of each semester... If you had demerits in the book, you got one whack for each demerit. And some of us had 10. Some of us had 20. Some of us had two. Some of us had none. But we dreaded. Oh, yeah, 50. Yeah, yeah, we dreaded that day. (laughs) And we would, and he'd take us one at a time out into the hallway and we'd listen. Whack. Oh, man, we're just sweating. And this is, I'm in seventh grade, eighth grade. You know, I'm not, I'm not a kid. I'm 12 years old, 13 years old. And um, I mean, we would listen to that going down in the hallway, and but we didn't and know. You were probably sweating in your boots. Yeah, because I didn't know how many demerits I had. And then he'd be <laughs> like, "Okay, church, you got one, two, three. You got seven. Oh man!" And I'd you have must to go. Be a better boy than I was. <laughs> <laughs> but this happened. And it was no big deal, you know, and we kind of laughed about it. I mean, it was just a day that we dreaded. Mr. Starks, that was his name, Coach Starks. Coach Starks. Oh, man, the demerit book. I got to yeah, say. Yeah, mine was Mr. Bassoni. Yeah, Coach Starks. And then something <laughs> happened. Something happened. Then then, then the paddles start uh, stopped. 
the I don't know when I don't know if it was a law, some federal law came down, some state mandate where uh um how do I want to say that? where where they just deemed like it was some kind of punishment. It wasn't. It wasn't. You know, and you know what? That's a corporal punishment rule um, here, you know. But, uh, you know, so it's like, yeah, uh, you know, I, in fact, I remember I would have to spank my, my kids when they were misbehaving, you know, because that would be the thing, um, you know. The ex would turn around and say, Boy, you wait until your father gets home, and so the kids would be sweating it. And then when they come home, you know, they, then they knew that, uh oh. But you know, I always kind of cut my hand and and just gave him a little tap, and it just like you know ma- made a lot of noise, but didn't hurt, you know. And it's like, but you know, that was back in the day. Well, so you know what my mom, like, what my mom used to do, she would be downstairs with my aunt Z who just passed uh, last week, uh, God rest her soul. But they would be downstairs when we're upstairs sleeping or supposed to be sleeping. You know, it was five kids uh, just causing trouble and ruckus and doing our thing. And, um, uh, right, so uh, and, and, and what my mom would do, she would take the belt and crack it from downstairs. When we would get a little bit too loud, we'd hear crack with the belt. And then we'd quiet down. Yeah, the oh, old snap. Yeah, the old decide, snap with the it under and just pull it apart. It just letting us know. And then sometimes she would start walking up the stairs. Crack, crack. We'd get all quiet. And then we'd she'd go back downstairs. We'd play this little game. I don't ever remember my mom like hitting us with the belt. I don't remember. Maybe once. That was all it took. But that's that was the threat. It was the threat of the belt downstairs. And when we'd wake yeah, up at, or uh, your parents go. Well, you're going to get a switch, and you go out there, and you and you better choose the precise switch. And of course, you always come back with a bigger one than they plan. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, bear! I got I got to thank you, man. Thank you for the call. I'm going to take a quick break. And uh, bear, all, okay, all the best, bear. Okay, bro. And uh, hey, keep your pants up, man. Yeah. Don't let them go down to your knees. Nobody knows the <laughs> truth, Bear. Let's keep it between us. I'll talk to you. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks, man. Be- oh, oh, I just cut him off. I thought he was gone. Bear from uh, Northern California, Central Coast. This is Fade to Black, only on the Dark Matter Radio Network. Taking your calls. It is Fader Night. 323-825-5045. You can Skype in. Fade to black 14. And uh, that's it. I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be back right after this. 323-825-5045. They're lined up. Get in line. I'll be right back. This is William from La Crescenta, and I listen to JimmyChurchRadio.com. Jimmy Church. My name is Alan, and I listen to JimmyTurkRadio.com. He's always giving it to you straight. JimmyTurkRadio.com. On the Dark Matter Radio Network. Hi, this is Rob Reiner from Anvil, and you're listening to JimmyTurkRadio.com. What's up? I'm Chris. What up? This is Kyle Massey, and you're listening to Jimmy Church Radio. The The Revolution. Revolution. Fader Night, my favorite night of the week. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. We are only on the Dark Matter Radio Network. Call in numbers 323-825-5045. Okay, they're stacked up. I'm going to go in order. Here we go. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black with Jimmy Church. It is Fader Night. Who's calling? Where are you calling from? Hi. It's just Rich from Palm Springs, JC. How are you? Rich from Palm Springs calling JC. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. You're talking about synchronicity. Wow. When you mentioned your coach's name, uh, I just couldn't but believe it because my coach's name was Mr. Sharp Sasso. Is that and, right? Uh, he was a hard nosed PE teacher. And, um, uh, what, what city? Had, what city? 
What's the uh, this is Highland Park, California. Okay, it's a good thing you didn't say Indianapolis, Indiana. Then I would have really freaked out. <laughs> well, he did, he did change schools. Now, I don't know where he went, but what's the chance of two teachers, same name, gym gym people, um, with the the will to twat? <laughs> right on. And, and and you know what? Are you a better person? Are you a better man because of it? You know what? I, I believe so. Yeah. But, um, you know. I hear these people saying, well, no, we never touch our child. And so what do you do to discipline? Well, what they do to discipline is not how uh, we were raised. And the ones that are being raised now are a generation to where they were coddled, said they would do anything in the world that they wanted to do, and that they were the person and should not listen to anyone else in your life tell you that you you're, you're not the person that you need to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. And look, I, I remember when our uh, daughters were born, they're about the same age, and uh, and I would watch other parents here in Southern California, you know, go to different things, Club Disney or whatever, you know, different places to go hang out with kids. And I would hear, time out, Johnny, time out. I'm like, time out? You need to crack him upside his little noggin. <laughs> You know, time out. You know, his little sister comes running up crying. You know, Johnny just uh, poked me in the eye and kicked me. And, and you know, time out, John. Time out. Yeah. Or to the naughty corner. Yeah, to the naughty yeah. Holy. <laughs> man, if I was a kid and I got a time out, I'd be like, man, give me a time out. Give me a book. I'll oh, go hang out in the geez. corner. And uh, I'm all good. You know? No, I wouldn't work with me. So it didn't work with you, didn't work with me, but the other did work, and um, I didn't raise my kid the same way I, because I, I had different ideas. But um, what my parents did um, stuck with me and stuck with me because I turned out to be a very well balanced individual, right? Um, with no, with no, they don't call it, they call it beatings today. You're right. Well, it wasn't beatings then. No, no. I, I, could you imagine complaining of? I never, you know what? Every time I ever got whacked in school, first off, I asked for it. That's the first thing. And the second, I never went home and told my parents I got whacked today. Well, no. no. They whacked you again. Yeah. What would you get whacked for? Well, I did. Oh, really? Drop your pants. Here it comes. <laughs> All right. All right. So enough of, yeah. enough of that uh, really quick, uh, Rich. Uh, what's your number? Uh, 310. No, no, not your phone, not your phone number. Oh, <laughs> uh, it's sixteen. Your number is sixteen. Now, uh, before I ask what the significance of that is, do you wake up in the morning uh, at any weird time uh, at night and wake up every single night and look at the clock and see a number? No, I, I don't. But I, I have other things going on in, uh, during the night in my dreams, which you've gone into just a little. I think you just barely touched the. Uh, Tip of that, and what uh, was that? I guess uh, dreams. Yeah, no, what, what they mean, what they don't mean. Right, right, right. Okay. So Sixteen um, is when I graduated from school. Okay. And um, that's the number um, that I couldn't wait to get to to have a car. I couldn't wait to get you to drive. I, Sixteen was a magic number for a lot of things at my age. And so, and so now today, do you live in apartment number 16? <laughs> you know I what I mean? Do. I do. <laughs> I do. Wow. I do. Now that's wow. synchronicity or that's freaky? That's, you know, go with it, man. You know, don't fight it. <laughs> don't fight it. Don't fight it. 16 is well, your I mean, number, huh? 16 is a number, it seems. Uh, well, my life took off at 16 when I got out of school. I was a whole new individual, a whole new kid. I, I that that's a that's absolutely an incredible story that, that that totally is, and it was a number that was given to you. You know what I mean? You didn't go out and seek it, but you didn't nope. fight it, and it was always there for you. And then this apartment number sixteen. Before I let you go, uh, uh, get to these other calls if you don't mind. But um, but that apartment number sixteen, it was given to you, wasn't it? Well, no, it was just by accident that I found a, a, a number 16 in uh, Palm Springs here. That's what I'm saying. Um, it was given yeah. to you. You didn't seek it. Well, no, I didn't. Uh, yes, and I guess it was given to me as, as a child dreaming. Everything came up 16. Fantastic. So I shouldn't have been surprised. 
go with it, man. Don't fight it. Don't ever fight it. Hey, Rich, thank you for calling, my brother. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You got it. That is Rich from Palm Springs. Let's go to, I'm taking these in order. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black with Jimmy Church. It is Fader Night. Who's calling? Where are you calling from? And what is your number? <laughs> hey, it's Jeremy from Kansas. Hey, What's Jeremy. Up, for, how are you tonight, sir? Good, man. My number? <laughs> 911, man. Every time I look at the clock. Re- that's a first. Okay, I haven't heard. That's weird, dude. Every time it seems like I look at the clock. Nine eleven. <laughs> <It's weird. laughs> that that is uh, what I just and did right there. That was a nervous laugh, man. That is. And a, guess what it is? Guess what time it is right now, Jimmy? It 11, is eleven. It's uh, well, you know what time it is here. Nine uh, eleven. Nine eleven. Nine eleven on the weird. dot. Nine eleven on my computer. Nine eleven on the that studio clock. Weird. Wow. And, wow. I didn't plan this, dude. You just answered the phone. Dude. I've been trying to call forever. The, I, the, the calls are stacked up. I'm sorry, Jeremy. You know how it is, man. I try I'm to get everybody in. I try Fader to. Night. Yeah, Fader night. It's Fader night. I love I love Thursdays. I you know it's, You know what's weird? Um we were talking. I was worried it wasn't going to work out. Well, we were ta- right, 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 right. We were talking before uh, the show tonight. And uh, they're they're like, uh, dude, you're nervous. I'm like, it's fader night. You know, I'm in control. You know, if I have Grant Cameron on or, or you know, a guest, or Grant, uh, Grant comes to mind because he was on last night. But I'm in control mm-hmm. of that. I know what right. I can do, what I can't do, where, you know. Yeah, and, and topic. So, right, right. I'm in control. I'm in the driver's seat. I, I toe the line. Mm-hmm. I'm with, with fader night, man. It is just random calls mm-hmm. coming in one after another and i it's this nervous excitement that i have it is just so cool just you know imagine going to a party because that's mm-hmm. what this is you go to a party and you know everybody there and you just get to walk through the room and yep. and talk to people no no not you know everybody everybody knows you okay oh, okay you, you understand? Because, you because, yeah, because I, me. yeah, I don't know the, <laughs> but I don't know the calls that are coming in. I don't know who's calling in. True. I don't. Exactly. I'm just picking them up yeah. and and and. But everybody knows they're calling me. But I don't know the opposite. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, it's like this nervous thing, man. It's great. I love it. I absolutely love it. Do you? Yeah, um, I think everybody, everybody likes Fader Night, man. Yeah, Fader Night's the best. Do you ever? Let me tell you, I have a really bad habit. I love talking. Okay. To, I love talking to people. I love it when you mm-hmm. call. I love it when people call. I I love talking to people, and I have this weird thing that I do. And you can ask Rita. Uh, uh, it'll mm-hmm. get posted right now on Twitter. She somebody's going to ask her about it right now. But I talk to cops. I do. If I see a okay. cop or a fireman, you don't see firemen out in public that often. But if I see a cop. I'll walk right up to him. If a cop and I'll go, dude, what's going on? What's going on? What's up? What are you doing? How are you doing? I will do it every single time. If a cop pulls up to me at a street light, pulls up to me and is next to me, I will roll down the window. I'll tell him to roll down the window. What's up? What's up? What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm driving my car. What are you doing? I'm driving my car at the stoplight until that baby turns green. Him and I are talking. I have this weird, oh. I, I will go up anywhere, any place. It could be a traffic accident. <laughs> I'll go up. You know, he could be walking, whatever. It doesn't matter. Restaurant, walking down the street. He's on the beat. He's not, whatever. I, I cannot help myself. And Rita and I will, will be out in public and it'll happen. And there'll be a cop standing there and she will turn. Don't do it. Don't, don't do it. And I'll walk right uh. up to him. Yeah, it's it's a weird. I love to talk to people. Mm-hmm. I do. I want to know what they're doing, how they're doing, what right. are you doing, how's your day, you know. And I'll get all of that out of them. And and uh, and I I like to I like to call uh, like I call uh, an insurance company lady or something like that. Or you know, I like to find out where they're from and talk to them. And they're all they're always like weird. And 
thinking it's weird that I'm talking to him, trying to find out where they're from and, you know, how the weather is. They're always like, okay, that's weird. But I just <laughs> like to talk to people. There's nothing wrong. I, I, you know, it's gregarious. You know, there are some yep. people that, that don't do that. Most, I think most, oh, and you know what? And, and anybody that's in the military too, as well, if I see somebody in uniform in general, mm-hmm. I guess that's what it is. In uniform too, absolutely. I'll walk right up, dude. Thank no, you. Thank you. Ab- oh man, that's what I do. You yeah. know, absolutely. I do too. You know, and I, I, really I, I have zero issues with it. And 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 most police, I'm going to grab this next call if if you don't mind, Jeremy. But most police, they're they're so used to people being nervous when they're around. You know, so there's always this wall built up. And and when I go up and start talking to them, the first thing they think they're probably is oh something's wrong you know so you get right. that barrier down and just find out they they probably haven't talked to anybody all day you know exactly. just go up and say yeah. what's up all right hey jeremy cool, Jimmy. all the best man 9 11 9 11 i'll talk Isn't to you man. Weird? yes and i called you on at 9 11 picked up the here picked up the phone call <laughs> at 9 11 i'll talk to you thank you jeremy all right man all the best Have a good one, bro. you too Bye. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. It is Fader Night. You're talking to Jimmy Church. You are live. Where are you calling from? Hey, Jimmy, this is Brad calling from Atlanta. Brad from Atlanta. I read your email last night on the air, by the way. Oh, uh, you get cool. I miss a few minutes every once in a while trying to get to work. <laughs> it was, hey, uh, it was, it, it was... 9-11-2. <laughs> oh, is it really? Oh, let me ask you, uh, Brad, uh, because I almost asked Jeremy the same question. Was it 9-11 before 9-11? No, yeah, it wasn't. Uh, until 2001, I never, it never struck me when I'd wake up and look at the clock on Saturday morning or something or walk in the kitchen and I'd see the clock on the microwave. I said 9-11. I never noticed that before 9-11. Weird. Weird. And now, how do you feel about that? I mean, do you think of New York, too, every time you see it? Yes, I do. Wow, I that's... Think, uh, every time I see it, yeah, it's like thinking of, uh, you know, watching the plane fly into the building. And it's just creepy. Yeah, that's, that's pretty messed up. Um, it would be maybe a little different. You would have a different story. If it was before 9-11, so then you could say, wow, you know, maybe I had a premonition or the, the number was significant to me and now I, it's important to me. But, but no, it happened after 9-11. So now when you see it, you're forced into the memory of 9-11. And that's right. your story. Yeah, that, that's pretty messed up. That's pretty messed up. Um, and <laughs> you almost called me at 9-11. That was kind of weird that... Uh, Jeremy called. I picked up his call spot on nine eleven. I mean, when yeah, he, I, was, I was listening to that. That was pretty weird. That was pretty weird. So, um, do you ever wake up in the middle of the night or, and wake up? Uh, uh, I don't know what time you go to bed, but do you wake up and look at the clock at nine eleven, or do you look at the clock? It's nine eleven. It's time for bed. I mean, how does that work? Well, a lot of times I'll I'll just be laying there and I'll just glance over the clock randomly and it's like nine eleven. Wow! Or, you know, I'll be cooking dinner in the kitchen because I got to work late at night. So and I'll look over at the clock and it'll be like nine eleven. Oh, that is. I don't notice any other time. <laughs> just, That's messed up, you know. But do you feel um, uh, because of the memories and we all know what nine eleven means to everybody, but. Uh, how do you feel? How does it make you feel? Do you feel? It's just like a, it's a jolt. It's like a, like kind of a shock. It's like, wow, it's 9-11. Wow. And I, I mentioned it to my wife a few years ago and it started happening to her. Wow. I, it hasn't since we've been talking about this all month um, over at Casa Day Church. Um, I've been waiting for it to, to start to happen to me and it hasn't yet. And I'm, I'm uncomfortable with it. I, you know, I, in in that, and, and I guess the reason is, is because it's never, I have never noticed ever, ever me looking at a clock in the middle of the day at the same exact time. 
um, a couple days in a row, 10 days in a row, a year in a row, you know, no, it hasn't happened to me. And I don't, no, I was going to say, I don't know what I'm going to do if it does start happening. That's pretty weird. And, and your subconscious, yeah, your subconscious is telling you something. Yeah, it is, I believe. And, uh, I mean, when I was a teenager, I went through about two years of waking up at 3.30 every morning. I'd wake up for a few minutes, and then I'd go back to bed. At 9.11? No, at 3. Uh, this was back at, when I was a teenager in the 80s. Oh. Uh, it was like uh, 3.30. Oh, and I happened, missed that. that oh, that really? happened for a few years back then. Oh, really? See, now, I do get up in the middle of the night, but it's a different time every night. And some nights uh, I sleep straight through. And uh, so I don't want to, I don't want to give away too much of my private life, but I'll say this. Um, our house is next to a train station, very close. And uh, so we have to deal with the timing of those trains that come by late at night. And when we used to sleep with the window open, we don't do it any anymore. But um, I would wake up in the middle of the night when that train would come by. And so, uh, but I, I, I never, I know one of the trains comes by at 1105. And another one is uh, at two something in the morning. But I don't wake up anymore at that time. Um, when I usually get up in the morning or in the middle of the night, if you want to call it that, because this show ends at 10, um, I get home at 11 and then we eat, we try to get to bed by 12, one o'clock in the morning. That's just our schedule. Um, so, but if I wake up in the middle of the night, it's usually four thirty, five thirty in the morning, but it's never, never at the same time. And I never look at the clock. I never do. And, I was saying last night uh, that I wear analog watches. I don't wear a digital watch. And I don't, when I get home, I take watches off. Okay? I, I say watches. I have, I, I, I like watches. I have a lot of watches. And they're automatic watches that wind themselves. You know what I mean? No batteries, right? Yeah, you got the so, little tilt thing to keep them wound. Yeah, yep, 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 yep. So when I get home, I take those watches off and I put them away. So, uh, like, right now, uh, I'm wearing a watch. But if uh, as soon as I get home, the watch comes off, and I don't sleep with watches on. Make sense? So, yeah, but, yeah. I mean, you got a microwave that's probably got the time on it, right? Yeah, well, that would mean I would have to walk downstairs. That's sleepwalking. Oh, oh, that's I'm, food I'm walking. Saying, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Oh, hey, hey. Brad, always a pleasure, my friend. And that's weird. Two nine eleven calls in a row. Uh, let's uh, get guess who's up next. Dino. Yeah. Dino. Oh, Dino. Dino's coming on. I guess I better get off of Dino. Uh, all right. Thank you, Brad. All the best. All right, Jimmy. Have a good one. You too. Let's go straight to it. It's the man of the hour, as always. Dino, how are you tonight? Oh, pretty good. How are you? I am fantastic, sir. And before before we just get to salutations, I got to know, Dino, and the world wants to know right now, what is your number? Well, I don't want the NSA and all these folks to know. I try to keep a low profile. But, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I always heard that seven was a lucky number. And I thought, oh, yeah, lucky seven, lucky seven. And it, and something in my birthday added up to it. But, you know, through the years, the number has always been six for me, including a couple of addresses. And I think I'm not an expert on, on uh, numerology, but from my limited research, I think you're supposed to take the primary number. For example, if someone has 911, you add them all together to the most prime number, to the most prime integer. So... I've always had a six, but if you have like one seven, then eight is your number. I'm I'm listening. I'm I'm writing that's this what down. I understand. Again, right. that's not my area of expertise. Interesting. Interesting. Um, what? Is, how do you? How? What have you found that it it has meant to you personally? Well, like you, I'm I'm a Libra. I think we all know that. And right. It means balance. 
and it can be divided into two threes, and three is the trilogy, you know, whether you're, if you were raised Christian, you know, uh, three, you know, unfortunately, um, I know that, uh, what's her name on here, Donna, that emails all the time, she says she's got an Irish boyfriend, it's Scottish, you know, because I've got the Scottish in me, and those are the ones that are supposedly more sensitive, the Native Americans and the Scottish, and like my father, I think I've always been attracted to Native American, you know, and yet their number to me is four because it's the four directions. Okay. North, south, east, west. Correct. What about uh, the middle of the night? Do you ever wake up and look at the clock? Well, you know, that's why I wanted to call in. You know, I have a psychology background and I, I would have to say we don't want to give everybody precognition or pre-suggestion, and everybody's going to be waking up. And, you know, I had a guy that told me years ago, an older friend that says, oh, just wait, you'll, you're going to have to get up to pee every night. And he goes, and he goes, actually, you should get up to pee. You should check. They're like, what are you talking about? I don't get up every night to pee, <laughs> you know, but as I get older, sometimes it happens, but not often. Right. And I'm not going to get into precognition and I'm not going to worry about waking up and looking at my alarm clock. What I do if I wake up in the middle of the night is I say, so with that doctor that has that book on back, I go, relax the back, relax the back. And I concentrate on relaxing back to sleep rather than letting my cognitive mind worry about numbers. And, you know, uh, an aunt who died many years ago told me that she never had trouble getting to sleep. And she'd had a lot of troubles in her life and worked hard. And I said, why not? And I followed her advice when she told me when I was 30 years old. She said, because my problems are going to be there tomorrow or not. But if I think about them before I go to bed, I'll be so worn out, I won't be able to deal with them. However, if you just put it out of your mind and say, look, I'm going to deal with whatever tomorrow, you'll be fresh. Interesting. Very Interesting. Well, and, well it, is it a biological clock or is something telling or making you do it like a dream well uh, well, if you're over 50 i think it's your prostate <laughs> <laughs> which is where i was going but also could it be a dream telling you that you have to you know um you know what i mean it could it be a dream reminding you of that i mean i understand the prostate issue well i don't yet I'm only 50. <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I'm not going to cross that line. Um, but, uh, but I do find myself, and I've said this before on the air, that's why I'm bringing it up, which is dreams will make me wake up. Okay, dreams will make me wake up. I'll wake up, I'll be in the middle of a dream, and something is telling me to wake up for whatever reason, and I'll get up. I'll get up. And, uh, and, and maybe get a drink or, or maybe go to the bathroom or maybe go get something to eat. I do that all the time. I'll do, uh, this drives, uh, Rita crazy, but, and again, I'm sharing so much of our personal life, but I do, yeah. I do cookies and I, I, I do cookies and milk at night. Oh, <laughs> cookies and milk. There is nothing like Oreos and milk in the middle of the night. I got that from my dad. And uh, uh, I must say, I must say, it's what you eat. And that's what I've found uh, as I'm getting older. Uh, I had some beautiful, uh, since everybody likes bacon, I don't, I've cut way down on my meat consumption for many years because my mother, who was a very healthy and slender woman, uh, died of some complications of some blockage. And I always swore when she died, I was so upset that I wasn't going to eat fat. And, um, you know, I, I look pretty good for what I am, but I've learned not to eat and uh, Pamela Anderson knows this too. Uh, why she looks so good? You don't eat carbohydrates at nighttime. You know, you can eat all you want during the day. In the morning, I don't even eat meat. I eat cereal and healthy. I have a piece of fruit and a right. cereal, whole grain toast. And you can burn all that off, but this will affect your sleep. Uh, tonight, as I say, I did eat some carbohydrates, but I learned from my Sicilian mama that uh, you always, I used to laugh at her, but you always eat your vegetables last at any meal. And I do it whether I'm at a restaurant or at home because it cleans out your system. If you got fiber and it cleans out all that other junk from the food, and all you need at nighttime is protein, protein in a vegetable. And with a lot of protein, your body regenerates and your muscles and your brain cells, and you're going to sleep more soundly. You know what, uh, 
Leslie, and a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Leslie just posted between the hour th- hours of three a.m. and three fifteen is the devil or demons time. And uh, let's see, uh, Eugene just posted three thirty three a.m. was the demonic hour. Three a.m. and particularly three thirty three. That's messed up. See, yeah, I don't want to. I'm quiet. I, uh, yeah, I, I don't think sometimes. See, I don't want to know this stuff. I, I really don't. <laughs> I don't because then now, now when I see it, I'm going to freak. All right, let me grab some more calls, Dino. Okay, All the- well, I want to thank Eugene for a couple of weeks ago commenting thank you to me, and he wants to talk about the the Black Knight satellite. I so just told him. I just, I just told Eugene, call in, call in. We'll All do right. it. All right. I'll talk to you next week. Have a good week. You got it. Be safe this weekend, Dino. You too, and eat well and and lose some weight, and you'll feel better and sleep better. I don't know about losing the weight, but I'm going to eat well. Thank you, Dino. Eat more vegetables. Bye. (laughs) I'll talk to you. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black. It is Fader Night. Who's calling? Where are you calling from, and what is your number? This is Rick calling from Vegas, and my number is seven. Your number is seven. How are you doing tonight, Rick? I'm doing pretty good. We're actually... Usually seven, but multiples of seven also work. It's weird. So 14, like me, 14 is a number Uh for you? 14 is another one. 21? Yeah, predominantly seven and 14. Seven and 14. Hey, how about, uh, um, how about, uh, uh, hold on, I'm checking here, Uh, bear with a pie. Three, three, three. That was funny. uh, That's my birthday, 314. Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah, and it's the same. It's the same birthday as Sukhlov, Einstein, and it's also the day that uh, Dr. Lowe passed away. Now, my birth date is ten ten. Everybody knows yeah. it's ten ten. And yeah. a few years ago, I had ten ten ten, and that was pretty yeah. weird. And for I, I thought something was going to happen that day, something cool, something bad, something. It was just a day. It was just yeah. a day. Nothing yeah. happened. And uh, I, you know, I feel weird for, for somebody that has like a, a 31 in, you know, in that nothing will ever match up in, in your lifetime. You know, it's not going to get there. But uh, for me, yeah. it rolled around and actually happened. And we did a 10, 10, 10. And uh, there you go. So do you ever wake up in the middle of the night? Uh, only to screaming children. Ah, uh, man, you've got a great <laughs> I want family. Water. I need to go to the bathroom. Yeah, well, uh, but I just did out of the night for uh, no reason that I know of. Uh, not really. No. Okay. All right. I usually, I usually have some sort of trigger that wakes me up. You know, it's weird. Some people do. Uh, when I talk to them about that, about me getting up and and doing Oreo cookies at night, and I do. Okay, yeah. Michael Anderson just said I just drank a half a gallon of Ovaltine. <laughs> but uh, man, I miss Ovaltine, and they still make that stuff. That stuff's good. Oh yeah, but, yeah, they still make Ovaltine. But it's I, good stuff. I'm a big Oreo cookie guy at night. Oh, Nutter Butters too. Slam, you know, with a big glass of milk. Love. Uh, um, let's see what else. I'm not a big Chips Ahoy guy, but uh, um, um, shortbread cookies. <laughs> mm-hmm. that's my thing at night and when I would tell people this they would look at me and go dude you get up in the middle of the night I sleep straight through I've never yeah. done I've never I mean once in a while and I do like it when I do uh, I'll sleep through um, in the middle of the night and I uh, sleep through the night and and not get up Rita and I once we started shutting the windows and and ignoring the trains yeah, I woke up in the morning very refreshed, but I still get up in the middle of the night. I got to have my uh, cookies and milk. I do it. All right. Yeah. I, I've sleep said sleep is a really funky thing for me because I have a, a couple of sleep disorders. So, yeah, if I can sleep all the way through, I'm good. Uh, <laughs> all the best, Rick. Let me, I'm going to, yeah. look, I'm just going to say yeah. um, all the best to you and the family. I'm going to jump from you to Space Boy. So, ah, oh, okay. he just jumped off. Space Boy just jumped off. But uh, okay. all the best. Well, I'll tell you what. Next, uh, next week, then, I'll call you um, and tell you about what uh, we found with this investigation. Oh, you and your night. dad. You and your dad. Yeah. All right. Uh, tease yeah. us. Tease us uh, while we wait. Um, Space Boy, and there was two other calls that, that hung up. Ah, oh, Space Boy's back. 
All right. Okay. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. Space Boy, you're on with Rick. Space Boy. What's up, my friend? Hey, you're on with Rick. Say hi to Rick. Hey, Rick. What's up, man? Hey, how's it going, the ambassador of Texas? Yeah. <laughs> well, what can I say, my friend? Uh, okay, <laughs> yeah. really quick. You know what? Somebody, you know what? Let's do a party call. This this Uh-oh. caller too has been calling in all night, so let's just do this. Hold on, check it out. Okay. Hi, you're live on Fade to Black with Space Boy and Rick Sinnott. Who's calling? RJ from the Arctic. RJ from the hey. Arctic. There you go. How are Rand- you chilling, RJ? <laughs> Randy J. Wow, this is kind of cool. Doing, it's kind of a warm, fuzzy feeling right now. It's uh, kind of weird. Okay, so look. I'm going to uh, let me be point man on this. We know that uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, Rick's number is number seven and fourteen. He combines the two. Maybe yeah. throws in a little twenty-one once in a while. Space boy, <laughs> what's your number? Well, actually, it's two. I have, I use, I have uh, the number nine. When you combine all the letters in my real name, come up to the number nine, which is my power number. But um, the number I see all the time is the number five. I posted the thing on earlier about my Starbucks cup that had the number five on it. And then some people were talking about number five earlier, but number five. But number nine is my power number. Liam just posted. He goes, I get up and get seven golden Oreos and milk in the middle of the night. <laughs> Those golden <laughs> Oreos rock, by the way. Yeah, oh, they get seven. Man. Yeah, yeah, and he gets yeah. seven. He gets seven. Okay, RJ, RJ, my brother, what's your number? My number's kind of a long one, <clears throat> and I've been seeing this number ever since I was about nine years old. Is it 867-5309? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, all right. No, it's better than that. Okay. It's actually 38, 24, 36. Is it really? <laughs> No, let's not laugh. Basically I mean, that's a, it. that's a, yeah, I, uh, oh, I, I get the number, <laughs> but is it really your number? number? Uh, I started seeing that when I found my first Playboy. I'll hang up with somebody else call in. Uh, RJ, all the best, man. Stay warm. All right. Later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> Oh man! Nice. See, this is the thing. Uh, I really thought that he was going to go. Yeah, you know, but but it is my number. It, it pops up all the time. That's too funny. Um, no, you know, those are good numbers. Uh, those are great numbers. <laughs> those are Rita's numbers. Hey, uh, Space Boy, um, uh, do you ever get I'm up so in the middle? Of, yeah, do you ever get up in the middle of the night? Yeah, I, I, I do. Usually it's I'm burning up, I'm hot, and I'll get up. And usually, I tell you what, I've always heard the urban legends and the stories about around 3 o'clock and what Eugene and Les had pointed out. Right. But I've also heard stories about the um, abduction phenomenon happening about the same time. And it always kind of freaks me out to wake up at that time and, you know, and I'll have to go out in the back, look at the backyard and see if there's anything going on, or and then I can calm myself down. But yeah, three o'clock in the morning is it's spooky. Um, hey, do you ever have dreams or think you see something out of, your, out of the corner of your eye, but when you look, it's like you can't focus on it? Oh, all the time. Sure. Yeah, I, I work. I wear glasses, so I'm blind as a bat in the dark. So yeah, anything freaks me out at night. <laughs> yeah, we'll, 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 you and I'll talk off the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, uh, Stallone just said I tried chocolate covered Twinkies the other day. I wasn't as impressed chocolate as Irish. I thought I would be. I've heard. Uh, ha- have you guys tried those yet? Chocolate Isles, man. Th- those have been around forever. The hard find. There's actually a black yeah. market in some areas for chocolate uh, chocolate aisles. Yeah, believe it or not. Um, I've I've heard, you know, well, you know what though, I understand the disappointment because you would build that up in your mind for so long that if it doesn't live up to your expectations, because we all know Twinkie is as close to godliness as as we have on planet Earth. Um, oh yeah, and, and that, that's just there's no joke about that. But and and the same thing with Oreos. Now, when Double Stuffs came along, man, this, we're supposed to be talking about ufology and numbers and freaky dreams. But 
Um, Oreos are round. So are you a folk? Yeah, there, there you go. There you go. Um, <laughs> but double stuffs when they came along were gold. That they hit hit it out of the park with double stuffs. But the chocolate covered Oreos didn't do it for me. Didn't do it. I think they came and went. I don't even know if you can still buy them. Can you? I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Hey, and another another observation is Oreos are black. And if you eat them quickly, they'll fade away. So oh, they're, they're wow. fade to black. black. <laughs> Dang. Now, you know what I Get do? You know what I do do? This is my technique, is I'll take the Oreos apart. Now, now the first one or two Oreos, those get dunked whole. Okay, those get dunked whole. I don't take them apart. All, all at once, boom, take a swig of milk at the same time that the Oreo is in your mouth. That's what you do. That's, that's, that's the real-world technique. But then then you get bored, and I go to the next one. I twist them apart, and I'll eat the, uh, the cream, and then I dunk the, just the chocolate cookies by themselves. Is that weird? That, no, no, no. Sounds good. <laughs> I, no. I generally like I generally like to put like four or five in them. You know, after I take the frosting off and dunk them in milk and just let them sit there and permeate in the milk. Yep. The milk kind of yep. permeate with the yeah. No, no. The longer the better. And yes. and then what my dad used to do, and I only did this for a little while. I only did it because I watched him do it, and I thought it was cool. But he would take the Oreo. He would have a spoon. Okay. And like a big tablespoon, and he would put the Oreo on the spoon and put that in them and fully submerge it, fully <laughs> submerge it in the milk. <laughs> and he would hold it down there until he just couldn't take it anymore. Um, and that's how he would do his Oreos. And I'm I'm sure he still does it that way today. Me, well, I know it's so you can get the texture. Uh, yeah, well, the cookies yeah, 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 exactly, fully submerged. Me, I dunk it until the tips of my finger hit the milk. That's what I do. Mm. Yeah. So then I have like a little bite of the cookie that isn't submerged. Yeah, I know. I know it's weird. But uh, there is. Me, Billy. There, I, man, I'm <laughs> telling you, man, I'm an Oreo aficionado. I think we all are. Everybody has a way of uh, eating Oreos. I don't care. A vegetarian has a way to do it. A meat eater has a way to do it. Somebody on a diet lies about it, and they still do Oreos <laughs> in the closet. I'm not lying. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I know That's I'm not true. wrong. I know I'm not wrong. I know it. I know it. I know it. Even Eugene. Eugene dunks Oreos. I'm telling you right now. Hold on. Cortana yeah, just said, hold on. <laughs> Cortana just said, "Ugh, milk and cream makes me really sick. No thanks. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry." Oh, check this out. Um, our our Russian friend from um, uh, 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 overseas. I can't read his name. Yeah. What's what's his name? Ah, ah. He told I us. Know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. He anyway. He just said, "What is an Oreo?" <laughs> oh my goodness. Can you imagine? Oh. I know he's kidding. He's got to be kidding. Oreos, Oreos in the Soviet Union, uh, anywhere over there, Croatia, you know that stuff is gold. They know what that's all about. Please. Banana flavored oh, yeah. Twinkies. That's from Les. All right, guys, really yeah. quick. Uh, Les is going to be calling in here in, a, in just a second. He's our closer. So, um, do you. Definitely. Uh, I, I I think I got less right now. Okay, I'm gonna say I'm gonna All bid right. you to adieu. Okay. All right. You guys later. Have a good I'll call you in a second. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All exactly. Right. Good night, guys. Okay. Bye. All right. You're live on Fade to Black. Is this who's calling? You're live on Fade to Black. Fade or night. Three. Two. One, bye bye. All right, I thought that was less. It wasn't less. All right, this is Fade to Black. I am going to take a quick break. I just emptied out all the phone lines. I got to take five before Les calls in. This is Fade to Black. It is Fader Night. Thank you for everybody called in. Love Thursday nights. I might be able to squeeze one more call. Oh, they're calling back. We're gonna have to call back after the break. 
That's what you want to do. If you want to Skype in, it is Fade to Black 14. I'll take maybe one more call after the break. Despite popular opinion, reading a book will not make you smarter. But listening to Jimmy Church will on the Dark Matter Radio Network. He's always giving it to you straight. JimmyChurchRadio.com on the Dark Matter Radio Network. This is KJCR at JimmyChurchRadio.com on the Dark Matter Radio Network. Fade to black, fade or night. Got time for one more call. 323-825-5045. 323-825-5045. You want to Skype in? Skype in. Fade to Black 14. We've got time for one more. Crazy numbers tonight. And uh, I got, out of everybody, out of everybody, I, I, I'm, I'm leaning on Bear, 314, and 3.14 uh, being Pi. And uh, I'm going to thank Cortana for that, uh, pulling that in first. It's Alex, Jimmy. Oh, and it's Serbian, not Croatian and not Russian. (laughs) Uh, There you go. I apologize for that, Alex. And I will never forget that. All right. You're live. Oh, this is this Les? Yes, it is. How are you tonight, sir? Everything good? Everything's good. I I almost wished I would have had Space Boy and Rick on at the same time. I, I, well, you know what? Cool. You know what though. But it's about you. I I, I understand that, and I was going to do that. But um, uh, one, I was up against a, a break. That's the first thing. Second, it's about you, Les. Man, it's about you. Next, <laughs> you know what? Next week, next week, uh, we'll bring you all in at the same time. Oh, that would be cool. So, Les, what's your number? Uh, that would have to be 32. Why 32? Um, that was the number that they, everything I wore that was sports related that my grandmother Johnson gave to me when I was young. I think it was my dad's number in high school and college. Well, that's cool. Okay. So, so you hit the ground running then with 32 and did it. (laughs) So, right, right. So did it follow you for the rest of your life? No, I would have to say that's, that's the number that, that I most think about, but, uh, my personal number would have to be six. Um, I see that just about everywhere. Um, that's, that's the number that I see a lot. A lot of numbers add up to, um, that's, that's my personal number is number six. And if if it if it came down, the chips are down. You're a betting man, and number six is it. You're all in. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, all in is number six. What about waking up in the middle of the night? One eleven and uh, four forty four. Really? Okay. Yeah. Let Let's start with one eleven. When did that happen? What do you remember? The first. I mean, well, let, yeah. Let's start there. Eleven eleven. How and when and why? That's I've, that's been happening ever since my twenties. I don't know why, uh, but I always seem to wake up, and when I look at my watch, it's one eleven, and it's four forty four. I wake up at those two not those two times almost every night, if I'm not already awake. But I'll always look at my watch at a one eleven for some reason. Interesting. And did you ever investigate what the number meant to you, or did you find that it did mean something? No, not yet. Um, it's just, it's always been prevalent. It's always been there. It's uh, at least since right after high school, right after college. Um, right around college is the time I started noticing it. I, uh, 
as I have mentioned this to uh, uh, people throughout the last couple of weeks, I am amazed. I am. Nobody is shocked that I bring it. You know, it's just like, yeah, so what's the big deal? Yeah, it's been happening to me for a long time. Everybody does it. I haven't. I feel like I've really missed the party here, and, yeah. and there's something to it. Um, we have looked up uh, the, the numbers um, on the net. Um, we've had uh, a few different interpretations. Um, one, uh, one of them for 1111, and I'll say this to uh, uh, all the listeners, if you're waking up at 1111, is um, you, you are finding answers that you are comfortable and that things are uh, clear to you. So that, hmm. it, it, that, that, that's one. Um, and there's a bunch of different, that one seems to be fairly consistent, but, uh, if you find yourself in life uh, at a, at a point in your life where 11, 11 is significant and you, and you see it all the time and the number is in your life, it is a good thing. It's a positive thing. Now, Hey, that's cool. I'll take that now. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Totally. And, and I was, <laughs> I was so happy. <laughs> I was so happy. I was like, okay, <laughs> woo. Okay, you know, you know, the wipe of the brow, you know, kind of thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, uh, and what was your other number in the morning? 444. Now, what does that mean to you? You know, it's, you know, kind of like Space Boy uh, just said a few minutes ago. I, it's always around that time that I feel uneasy. Uh, I don't always wake up at 444, like the 111. But when I do, uh, have you ever had, you know, those, you know, it, where you think you're awake, but you're still really asleep um, kind of dreams, but you're trying to wake up? Um, you know, it, it's just it, uneasy when I wake up at 444, uh, unlike 111, just like you said, which is interesting to me. Um but what do you think? I see. I think if if your subconscious is telling you four four four, and you're waking up, and and you need to go and check that out, it could be a, a lot of different things. Number one, maybe something happened in your family at that time of the morning. Um, mm-hmm. It that could be part of it. Four 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 is the number twelve. Um, and the number 24 Ooh. and, and it's also, um, uh, who, uh, Dino said earlier, North, South, East, West, the four points, um, Ooh. and it's all even numbers too, as well. I'm not a numerologist. Um, I find it fascinating when people pick apart numbers and, and then tell you things about it. Um, I, do you remember a couple of months ago on the show when I told the story about uh, uh, my Armenian friend's mom who could read yeah. coffee cups, right? Yes. Now, well, she's not the only one. Any any Armenian woman, any Armenian mom or grandmother <laughs> does this, and they learn it, and they all do it. It's it's a fascinating thing. I wish I don't know if you have Armenians in your community out there, but but ask any Armenian friend that you have. Go, dude. Does your mom read coffee cups? And they go, of course, they all do. <laughs> it's what they do, right? So, um, but when she picked out those numbers out of the coffee cup and told me the significance of those, and if you remember, it was about paying my rent and how much money I was going to be short. And then two mm-hmm. weeks later, it, it, that exact thing happened. Now, looking into a cup like that and seeing numbers in there. Um, and finding the significance of those numbers, I, I have no idea. You know, I wouldn't. And the numbers, the thing is, when I looked into the cup at that time, I want to I want everybody to be clear. I probably wouldn't have noticed those numbers being there in the uh, uh, the way that the coffee grounds separate. You know, it kind of looks like lava. You know, like cracks. You know, it dries mm-hmm. out and it's cracky. It, it looks like that. Well, um, or, you know, dried paint or something, you know, that cracked look. 
Well, when she pointed out those numbers, those numbers were clear as day. And some people can do that. They, they are able to uh, 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 find out the significance of numbers and add them up and, you know, 3 plus 1 plus 4 plus 9 or whatever. And they're able to, to do that. But when they do do it and you find it, it being correct and it's significant for you when they don't know anything about your personal life, that I find fascinating, and also, for the lack of a better word, cool. I really enjoy <laughs> that. I really do. I, I don't have that talent. I don't, and I keep so much of my uh, you know my life private with people. Well, most people don't know anything about my private life. You know, they don't. I share things here on the air, and, and I'm mm-hmm. a very gregarious person, but there's the, the private stuff, the private, private, private stuff, I keep private. I do. And uh, how many Oreo cookies I grab at night? Well, that stays between me and me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know you know what I mean? And and if somebody, Absolutely. you know, if, if somebody came to me and started, you know, tarot cards or, or you know, pulling out significant numbers and hit me with something like that, oh, the number five at three o'clock in the morning is a very important. Well, that would freak me out. And I find it cool. I find it totally cool. Less, man. So what's going on? We've got one minute really quick before uh, we do the countdown here. Um, anything uh, crazy in your life this week? Any sightings? Anything weird go on? No, not in Nashville this week. I really haven't had a chance to go out and, uh, and really take a look around. Uh, I try to go out at least once a week, especially on the weekends. Right. Just to, it, just to look at the stars because I love the stars. Right. Um, I, I, man's fascination with stars is, is, I, I think been, you know, they've taken that away with all the lights. Yes, and, uh, yes, yes. And Nashville is would, very lit up too. Downtown is lit up, uh, every day of the week. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, I wish I could see the stars the way our ancestors oh, saw the stars. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I have to do something really quick here. Keep, keep talking, keep talking. Hey, Oh, I got, I got a question for you. The, Mm -hmm. um, you know where the convention center is downtown, right? In Asheville. Yeah. And, Oh, you're in Asheville. Oh, I was trying to think of, um, uh, ignore what I just said. And I'm trying to, (laughs) I'm trying to cue up the, uh, the music and I might not be able to tonight. Ah, no, let me see what I can do. It may not happen. You may end up reading our credits without, you know what? I can't hear, I can't hear the music on my phone anyway. So I read it without it. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Just tell me when to go and I'll go. Let me see if it (laughs) go. Jimmy would like to thank all the callers and say or not to phone home tonight. Stay tuned for Night Watch, followed by Spooky South Coast. Special thanks to Keith Rowland and Art Bell. Made the Black's executive producer is Rita Kamurian. Shows produced by Hilton J. Palm and Mark D. Kovar. A special thank you to me, Les Johnson III. Show graphics and logo by Method of Signaling. The announcers are Steve Harder. Gene Gunny Vital and Mark D. Kovar. Music is by Doug Aldrich. Show intro is performed by Space Boy. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Dark Matter Radio Network. This is Les, the closer. And Jim and I are wishing you a good night and a safe weekend. See ya, everybody. Up next is Spooky South Coast. Have a safe weekend. Thanks, Les. Thanks, brother.